picked up the wrong horse. That's not the right horse. I'm so sorry. He, He's the three. Yes. He got into a log jam at one point of the race, and he just didn't have the chance to overcome it. And I personally thought he never really got clear room to run. He lost by a length in a grade one event, and that was a very good race. We saw Warm Heart win the race. We saw I'm Very Busy. He finished second. He came back to uh, win the Muniz down in uh, the fairgrounds, and that was like a sparkling performance. I don't know if you caught that race, but the way he won that race was very impressive for Chad. So integration comes out of a very strong effort, and... When you look at his races, yes, he's been running, running a mile and an eighth. Sometimes people look at his running style and might think, oh, he needs to go longer. But that's not the case. I think some of the best milers, when they cut back with that type of turn of foot, it actually enhances their uh, performance because of how these mile races are run. I really, really like this horse today. Really, can, really. Can he have the turn of foot, though, on, on this kind of ground? Uh, that's a good point. It is a good point. And this this surface is so much different than the surface that he was on at Gulfstream. So, yes, that is a very good point. But I think the mile, even moving forward, is going to be a really beneficial distance for him. Obviously, Master of the Seas in second. And then Emmanuel, who I think you have to upgrade him a little bit with the scratches and the turf conditions. I don't know that he's a horse that absolutely loves loves a really wet turf but the fact of the matter is he's probably the controlling speed in this race today it, we could sit and spend 15 more minutes on the makers mark mile that's the reality that's how good of a race it is but let's go to tom leach for more on today's grade one trainer charlie appleby has a couple of the godolphin stable runners in here let's start with the big favorite master of the seas appleby tells me that there's no question about the fitness for his horse but maybe a slight question about the firmness of the ground. Uh, obviously, the conditions are uh, softer than we one would expect, um, but uh, he has one on good to soft there back in Europe. So uh, you know he has uh, you know he's encountered the conditions and, and handled them. So it's not a, you know it's not a complete negative. Um, the sound of the surface is the better for him, but he's one of the few horses in there uh, tomorrow that would have at least uh, like I say encountered those conditions, and he has one on them. Appleby will also saddle Naval Power, who has a recency advantage. He's coming off a start last month over in Dubai, and Appleby says this horse may relish the ground if it has some give to it. He's actually won on soft ground. He won last season uh, in Dubai. We had a, one of those uh, downpours over there that changed our ground similar to what it is here at the moment. So um, I'm confident, like I say, he ha will handle the conditions, uh, and if anything, it's going to bring stamina slightly into play, which is going to be a positive to himself. But um, hopeful of a big run from him to hopefully like, springboard him onto a you know, a nice sort of summer program here uh, in, in the States. This Maker's Mark Mile is always a fantastic race, and it's a pretty powerful one-two punch for the Godolphin stable, but no guarantees in a race of this quality. If that doesn't sell you more on naval power, I don't know what's going to come in straight from the source of Charlie Appleby. Yeah, that was great. I, Tom's been really bringing it this meet. I mean, I love these segments where he interviews the trainer and just has those little transitions in between. So that's the latest on naval power and um, a master of the seas, and we'll see what happens with both of them. And naval power is likely going to be prominently placed, right? What did you think say? So. Yeah, based on his running style, so absolutely. Okay. Let's go to race seven, the Fandle Limestone Stakes, three year old. Phillies, five and a half furlongs on the turf course today. Scratch nice as pie, the one, and Extreme Diva Hot Beach does draw into the race, the number 14, and that's where, where Jose Ortiz uh, sticks, is always primed the number four horse. That's a rider change to Tyler Gaffleone, um, as Ortiz, Jose Ortiz gave first preference to Hot Beach. Amidst Waves is the lukewarm morning line favorite at 9-2. to two. This had to be one of the toughest races to make a morning line so far this meet, because I, I think that I mean, just about every one of these fillies has the credentials to obviously be here mm -hmm. and have earned the right to be here in here. And I'm going this to... This is a bear of a race. It's, it's, uh, it's really so, tough. It's tough, but it is so... This was one of those races where you could get lost looking at replays, looking at pedigrees for hours. That's just the type of race it is. And then factor in the ground today, yeah, right? And then too. throw that into the mix. Um, I'm going with the nine horse Foxy Cleopatra for Richie Raven and Patricia's Hope LLC and our man Larry Ravelli. She's two for two in her career. She won at Presque Isle in speedy fashion on the synthetic. She stepped up to five and a half last time out and uh, powers 
clear of this group early on and kept on going to win by a length and a quarter. She beat Tipsy Runner, who's a filly that actually beat Big Trouble um, in a debut effort for Big Trouble. So there's the common... Uh, as far as foes are concerned, common foes between the eight and the nine. Ravelli's good with these speed horses. She's by Munnings. They gave a lot of money for her as a two-year-old last year, over $305,000, two for two in her career. I'll take my shot with Jay Love in the saddle, Jareth Loveberry, see how she handles the conditions. That's certainly a question for just about every one of these fillies. The three-horse Pipsy, the conditions may have come up right for her. She's an Irish bred filly. She's run on yielding ground, did so at the Curra in Ireland, two stars back she she's a stakes winner in ireland she comes to will walden's care they the, she was sold in 2023 for nearly a million dollars nine hundred and twenty eight thousand dollars as far as the conversion is concerned she's owned by woodford thoroughbreds things may be coming in the line for her to run a big race uh, here this afternoon and then the 10 horse crimson advocate the uh, royal ascot winner from the queen mary um, back last summer and she's run one since and that was in the breeders cup where she set the pace and got gobbled up in an extremely fast pace that's just not sustainable Sustainable. So we'll see how she fares here today on the comeback for George Weaver and Wathnan Racing. Uh, the Emir of Qatar is behind Wathnan Racing. So they privately purchased her, if I'm not mistaken, um, at some point after the Queen Mary. So that's the idea there. But I you, don't know what to do with George Weaver. to Weaver's have coverage horses. in this race. My gosh. I, I don't trust Crimson Advocate. I used her in second, though, amidst waves. I don't know what to do with either. It just seems like these... Phillies might like really firm turf. Um, but anyway, my top pick is the eight big trouble. We'll see what kind of price we get on her. Let's take you back to the fairgrounds last time out. This was over good ground, which I think is helpful in determining how she will handle the surface today. And it was legitimately good down there at the fairgrounds. She won this race so easily. She ran a great race first time out, but she came back to improve in her next start. And she went on to win this race by over four lengths in the end. You can see how easy this victory was. The filly that was closing in second was Zoe's Prime. Zoe's Prime is also in this race, the number four for Jose Camejo. Zoe's Prime, although she did drop in class in her next start, she came back to win a turf sprint by over seven lengths. So there was some quality in that field. And I always say this, you sometimes don't have to be the best horse in a turf sprint. You just have to be the fastest and you have to kind of stay out of trouble. And that just seems to be the case, hopefully, for the eight big trouble as a top pick. One more note on the three, Pipsy, and I think you have to use her in all of those exotic wagers in the second half of the card. I think it's also helpful that she did go around a bend. Some of those European tracks and configurations, it's just a straight shot with those turf sprints. But she comes out of a race where there was a left-handed turn. Not as drastic no, as we shall see today. But still, but yeah, I mean, exactly. you know, there's a big difference between going on the straight and a slight bend. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's move on to our sales grad spotlight. It'll be out of race number six. That's a six and a half furlong late and special weight for straight three-year-old fillies. And uh, Rusty Arnold's got on command the filly that brought $130,000 at the Keeneland September sale in 2022. She's by Omaha Beach from the first defense mother flautist bred by Peter, Peter Blum Thoroughbreds. She's run two good races in her career. She was beaten last time out by a filly that fetched a lot of money named Sedona at Gulfstream on the 3rd of March. So our sales grad spotlight shining on the Omaha Beach filly on command as she looks to break her maiden and looks primed to do so off of two good runs uh, to kick off her career. Clockers report, race number three. We will begin there with uh, Pyrenees. Pyrenees, the number one horse, worked a half mile in 48 and four. That was 19th best of 131 workers at that distance. Well-bred son of Into Mischief drilled that half mile in company with Cagliostro and a grade three placed upstart Colt won his first start against winners on a muddy sealed track at fairgrounds advantageous post as he gets post one today and then on command uh, back to that uh, runner that was our sales grad spotlight good work in company with Shore Shore War who was third in Maiden Allowance Company at Keeneland last fall has a license to improve in second start off the layoff so race one or race three excuse me race three the one uh, Pyrenees and race six the nine on command uh, part of our clock report for this Friday afternoon. Now, our multi-race exotics, uh, the $3 Keeneland Turf Pick 3, it's a Keeneland $3 two-thirds Pick 3. Okay. Because the first leg is off the turf. Yeah. 
So but they're still it. offering it still offer as a pick three. It. It's still a go. $36 ticket. Now, race number five, as you mentioned, there are a ton of scratches um, in this race. And I, I keyed in on, on dirt-type pedigrees. Just better for Mandy Pope and Whisper Hill Farm. She is a daughter of, of Justify, who ran well on a, a muddy track at Fairgrounds to kick off her career. And then she broke her maiden on the turf course. So I think she'll just be be just fine for Steve Asmussen and Frankie Dettori and then the number 14 uh, spiced for trainer Michael McCarthy a into mischief Philly that gets back to dirt for the first time since her debut uh, as a two-year-old at Del Mar uh, last I checked there was still a rider uh, announcement to come for spice it was a TBA situation there so once we get that or if we get it here in the next 10 or so minutes we'll let you know but Kurt Becker will have that announcement for you race number seven the FanDuel limestone uh, three and nine I I'd love to go further but with a three dollar minimum wager for most of us you've got to make it's a little steep quickly. very very uh, strong decisions big decisions if you will and and stick to it and that's the case and then in the grade one makers mark mile i'll go with my top three uh kubrick master of the seas and naval power 36 dollars investment three dollar keeneland two-thirds pick three for the day with race five off the turf all right, we'll take you through my late pick four sequence now. And I did use uh, the most coverage in the seventh race at Limestone, the FanDuel Limestone. And the three, five, eight, and the 10 was where I land. The three Pipsy, I thought a must use. The five Kodiak Wintergreen is going to be a play for me. I thought her race two starts back when she broke her maiden at Saratoga was really impressive. She clearly just doesn't want to go a mile. It's a question of whether or not she's fit coming off the layoff. The eight horse, I'm going to use Big Trouble, my top select. And then the 10 Crimson Advocate for George Weaver, who comes in off of a layoff since a Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint. In the next race, race eight, just the three and the 11 Classic Legacy. I have a strong feeling about this Belmont trainee. As we get to the ninth race, the grade one makers, Mark Mile, just the four and the eight. Of course, the favorite, the four master of the season, my top selection, integration. And then finally, we get to the 10th and final race. It's a starter allowance event, one, four, and nine are the top three for me for a $24 play. That's late pick four, our turf pick three. Opinions for the afternoon. Let's go to best angles. Race number eight, seven furlongs on the main track. It's a now what is a two allowance race. And here's a look at the entire field, which remains intact. Tunisian Spring is the nine to five morning line favorite for Wesley Ward and Breeze Easy, the speedy son of violence drawn to the outside um, here. I go to Magic Express as the top play. I'm going to play a rolling double races eight and nine. And I will go three deep to start things off because I think that there's going to be prices on horses that make sense in here good prices in both legs that's the idea magic express broke his maiden last time out in start two of his career and took a big jump forward from the debut at parks he was the favorite this day and he powers away from this group under kendra carmouche um, he's got speed seven eighths of a mile is not giving me an issue in my opinion for the son of good magic uh, bred by Stone Street, Thoroughbred Holdings, and uh, owned by Respect the Valleys. They bought for just $100,000 back in 2021. Good effort. I think today is a day that he can take advantage of the spot that he finds himself in. And uh, here's a look at 4, 6, and 9 in race number 8. Uh, Laver, I think, is one that you've got to respect in there. He'll be a price. And then the 9-horse Polster for Ben Colebrook, who's a son of Spitestown, Spitestown Runners, very good on the off track so that's the idea there and then in race number nine uh the top three naval power master of the seas and kubrick a daily double reduced takeout from 22 percent takeout to 15 and as we've said time and time again it just means that the doubles pay more with that reduced takeout yep Absolutely. And there are lots of opportunities, good opportunities for that double. I think it definitely comes into play with the Fandle Limestone later this evening. Race three is where I take us for my best angle of the day. I had to scramble a little bit with all the scratches. My best angle was originally in the fifth race. So going to plan B here with the number one Pyrenees as the top selection. A mile and an eighth on the main track for this two other than allowance event. And I just think this horse has come back in really good form. I don't quite know what happened because last year it seemed like he couldn't break his maiden. He was falling well short of, of breaking his maiden in some of those races. And then 
Cherie gave him time, a year off. He comes back. He breaks his maiden impressively. And then he went back to uh, face winners for the first time last time out. He won that event as well. So he just seems like a horse that's on the upswing. Now, I think the Prince's Spur, the two horse, is another horse that you can respect. I believe he's a morning line favorite. Let's just do a common race or common horse um, kind of a comparison, sure. right? Brigadier Commander. They both faced him in their most recent starts. The two, the Princess Spur, uh, lost to him by a head. Pyrenees beat him by a length, a two and a quarter. So I think that just kind of shows you how much the one has been improving. Even though they're smaller fields, it seems like the Princess Spur might have hit his ceiling, whereas Pyrenees seems like he's just getting good right now. So I'm just going to keep it simple. $20 win play on the one Pyrenees as the best angle for me in the third. Let's go to Tom Leach for his long shot pick of the day. Long shot play is going to be in the limestone stakes. If it stays on the turf or if it comes off, I think Foxy Cleopatra is one to watch. Just hopefully we can get a good price. First, she is in top form, and she has great speed for a trainer who excels in these turf sprints in Larry Ravelli. He uses his go-to rider, Jared Loveberry. And if the race should come off the grass, well, this horse is by Munnings a great mud sire. So let's go with Foxy Cleopatra, 12-1. to 1 on the morning line for a long shot play of the day. You can't not think of Austin Powers when you're, like, looking at that horse. Foxy Cleopatra. Okay. Beyonce's character, and you don't remember I, this? I, oh, I mean, my I, gosh. It's not the first thing that comes to I, mind when I think about Austin Powers, but, <laughs> but nonetheless, <laughs> sure. All right. I really thought you would get that reference. I am, I am shocked. I'm shocked that you didn't get that. I'm going to have to... Use the Google machine here in a minute. Show you. <laughs> Speaking of chest hair, <laughs> as we'll bring that up a second time for the Great. day. Um, that's going to wrap things up here on today at Keeneland. I'm just taking a glance here at the weather, um, and it does look like we maybe are going to get a little bit unlucky. I think you can back me up on this, that taking a look at our, our Keeneland Uber Doppler 7000 mm -hmm. uh, radar. There's some... There's some rain some coming. Some orange, it's yellow colors starting to headed darken up towards here a little us. Bit, Get out of here. We'll just see. Yeah, just away. move quickly. Move along to the rain. We don't. You, we know that you're not going to move along as we've got a big day ahead. It's grade one Maker's Mark Mile Day here today at Keeneland. Summer success begins. Buy, sell, fresh winners, hot prospects. One night, one chance. Finish strong. Don't miss out. The Keeneland April Selected Horses of Racing Age Sale. Friday, April 26th. This is the all-new Grand Highlander. Toyota took the best-selling Highlander and made it bigger, more powerful, and more fuel efficient. With your choice of three different powertrains, including the 362 horsepower Hybrid Max. The interior design is so tech-focused, I'm in total control. And you've got to love the 12.3-inch touchscreen. The big news is right back here with over 20 cubic feet of cargo space. Behind a full-size third row. Step up to something grand. Toyota. Let's go places. Keeneland, a horse will always be measured in hands. Hands that see, that sense, that speak. Hands that hold our sport to a higher standard. Not for our sake, but for theirs. For the love of the horse. For generations to come. Keeneland welcomes pause and listen to the paddock.
Pause and Listen is an all-female ensemble audition from within the University of Kentucky Women's Choir. They sing pop a cappella music and are wonderful ambassadors for the university, performing on a regular basis in concerts on and off campus and for various functions in the community. Today, Pause and Listen is pleased first to present our state song, My Old Kentucky Home. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as you are able for our national anthem. Keeneland is proud to recognize Chris Reynolds from Dining as the employee of the day. Congratulations, Chris.
Good afternoon. Welcome to Keeneland Racecourse, where the main track is listed fast. The turf is listed yielding the rail at zero feet on the turf course. We are off the turf for race five, but the stakes races remain on the turf. Races seven and nine remain on the turf, which again is yielding, and the rail at zero feet. Time now for a look at all of the program changes. First race starts the first of the day's rolling doubles and pick threes and also begins the early pick five. In the opener, scratch the four, land and the mark deal and scratch eight Latin Casino. Scratch number four, landmark deal, and scratch the eight Latin Casino. Race two, start of the early pick four. Scratch the five, modern day warrior. Scratch thirteen, unreasonable, and scratch fifteen, glamorous. That's in race two, scratch the five, modern day warrior. Scratch 13, unreasonable, and scratch 15, glamorous. Please note, number 14 will run. 14, Master of the Night, draws into the race with Santo Sanjur as programmed to be the rider. Please note, there's a change of equipment in race two today for the one, Liquor Talk, blinkers on. That's number one, Liquor Talk. Please note, change of equipment, blinkers on today. Third race. Scratch five, Barber Road. Again, scratch number five, Barber Road. Fourth race. Scratch number three, Filio Del Rey. And scratch number four, Moro. That's in the fourth race. Scratch number three, Filio Del Rey. And scratch number four, Moro. Jockey change on the seven, Aged Truth. That'll be Joel Rosario. That's the seven, Aged Truth, the jockey Joel Rosario. Race five, double and pick three wagering. Start of the pick six with no carryover. It is also the start of the Keeneland Turf pick three. Just keep in mind, race five, the first leg of that Keeneland Turf pick three comes off the turf, and race five will go a mile and a sixteenth on the main track. Race five, off the turf, mile and a sixteenth on the main track. No superfecta on that fifth race. Several scratches. Number one, Bell of Rights is a scratch. Also, scratch number three, Modern Sound. Scratch the four, Only Emotions. Also, scratch the five, Royal Winter. And the six, Smiling Ellie. Also, scratch number eight, Summer in Tahoe. Scratch the 11, Kill Shave Beauty. Scratch the 12, Calispera. Also scratch number 13, Expatriate. And scratch number 15, Curlow's Cause. That's at race five. It's off the turf, a mile and a 16th, main track. And again, scratch the one, Bell of Rights. Scratch the three, Modern Sound. Also scratch four, Only Emotions. Five, Royal Winter. And six, Smiling Ellie. Also scratch number eight, Summer in Tahoe. Scratch the 11, Kill Shave Beauty, as well as the 12, Calispera. Scratch 13, Expatriate, and scratch 15, Curlo's Cause. Please note number 14, Spice, draws into the race, the jockey to be announced. Number 14, Spice, draws into the race, there will be a jockey change rider to be announced. And again, keep in mind, no superfecta on race five. The Keeneland turf pick three remains intact, but we just start with the main track in that first leg, race five. Moving on to the sixth race. Race six is where the late pick five gets underway. No changes in the sixth. Race seven, the fan duel limestone starts the late pick four. A reminder for race seven, the turf currently listed, yielding, rail at zero feet. In that seventh race, scratch number one, nice as pie, and scratch number 13, extreme diva. Again, scratch the one, nice as pie, and scratch 13, extreme diva. Please note number 14, hot beach, draws into the race. 14, hot beach will run. The jockey will be Jose Ortiz. That means there's a jockey change on number four, Zoe's Prime, Tyler Gaffalione, the jockey. That's number four, Zoe's Prime, 
Tyler Gaffalione, the jockey. Race eight, no changes. Featured ninth race, 36th running. Maker's Mark Mile, grade one. And again, race nine remains on the turf. Scratch the one, Equitize. And scratch the seven, Du Jour. Scratch number one, Equitize. And scratch number seven, Du Jour. Again, turf yielding, rail at zero feet. Tenth and final race, no carryover for the Toyota Super High Five. Scratch number seven, Lips Say Bliss. That's in the tenth and final race. Scratch the seven, Lips Say Bliss. Those are the current program changes. Time now to check in with Scott Hazelton and Gabby Gaudet. Happy Makers Mark Mile Friday to you, Kurt Becker. And for those of you joining us here at Keeneland Racecourse, the temperature has dropped. We hope that the rain will stay away. We might have a bit of rain here in the next little bit. But as of right now, Gabby, both of the stakes races are on the turf. Race number five, that other turf race, is off the turf. But the grade one Makers Mark Mile, the headliner, there is some serious depth as we've got the returning Breeders' Cup mile winner, Master of the Seas, coming back to Keeneland once again. Yeah, Charlie Appleby sending this horse back here in the grade one makers, Mark Mile. We obviously saw him send out Modern Games in this event this time last year in the same race. Modern Games, for what it's worth, did lose at two to five, but he looks primed and ready to go. He is by far the class of the field here. Race number seven, the FanDuel Limestone for the three-year-old sprinters on grass, our co-feature, but the big one is the grade one makers mark mile international competition and one of the better grade ones that you will see this springtime here at keeneland racecourse good luck on this friday afternoon Horses are getting ready for today's opener, of course, later today in the grade one Makers Mark Mile. Looking forward to that, as well as the uh, FanDuel Limestone a little bit later today. But let's try to build that bankroll with some of these undercard races that are really nice. This race being one of them, it's a $16,000 open claiming race, six furlongs on the main track. And we're looking at the six right now. That's my top selection in Tilted Towers. He's an old eight-year-old, and he is very classy, an eight-time winner out of just 28 starts. He had a good year last year, picking up an, an additional three wins uh, to his record. Uh, he's a horse that just comes out of very, very tough races. Finally, they do give him a drop in class. The last time that we saw him in Kentucky, actually, he was going against Allowance Company, Starter Allowance Company. One of his more impressive wins was when he went against two other than Allowance Company, a very high-level race. I know it was a smaller, tight field, and it was a scratch down event because it was an off the turf event but he still won that race and received an 86 buyer speed figure for that win so this horse just has a lot of class he fits this race i'm not going to be too clever in here i go to him as the top selection the two figure ready is another horse to look out for trainer jose d'angelo and for what it's worth i think you know, is what makes Keeneland Springs so difficult is trying to figure out the class from all of these different areas, whether it's Florida or Arkansas or Turfway or Fairgrounds. And I thought the two figure ready comes out of some pretty decent efforts at Tampa and Tampa form has actually been holding pretty well here. Both Tampa and Gulfstream Park, we've seen horses exit and do quite well at the meet. So the two figure ready is going to be my second selection. If he's around there somewhere, the two figure ready anyway uh yeah he's gonna be my top my second selection here there he is 
and uh, I look for him to maybe get a stalking trip and to pick up the pieces late. But back-to-back -back wins for him back in December and January at Turfway Park. He really, de Tampa Bay Downs, excuse me, and he really does seem to fit the flow of this field. Finally, we get to the five, Coyote Road. He's going to be the third selection for me. Disappointing performance last time out. Actually, his last two races were very disappointing, but those were his only two efforts on the all-weather surface at Turfway. So my thought process is Ray Hernandez is training uh, you know, he tried him at Turfway, didn't want to ship him all around the country. He clearly didn't like the surface. Let's give him a little bit of a breather, a break, and point for some of these Kentucky races when we're back in action at Keelan and Churchill. And I think that's what they did with him. Now they're back on the dirt, a surface that we know he likes. He's a three-time winner on, on the dirt. Blinker's going on, and he gets the seven pounds off with Yuan Navas aboard as well. So he's a big price at 16 to 1, but look past those synthetic races. Look at his dirt races, and I think he's right on par with some of the top contenders in this field. It's a very competitive claiming race to kick off this program. We are 13 minutes out from the opener. Good luck.
Horses are entering the track for Keeneland's first race, claiming race for a price of $16,000. Four-year-olds and up, six furlongs over the main track, which is listed fast, double and pick three wagering, and start of the early pick five. In the opener, scratch the four, landmark deal. Also scratch number eight, Latin Casino. Since this does begin the early pick five, a reminder that we are off the turf in race five. Race five is the race that comes off the turf and goes a mile and a sixteenth on the main track. So that reminder for the early pick five players, we do remain on the turf for the stakes races. Race seven and race nine remain on the turf. Post time for the first in seven minutes. Taking a closer look at the field as they're warming up on track. I loved what I saw from the favorite, the six at five to two. So there's nothing more to say, but I did want to touch on some other horses that are higher odds. And the one Rivoli was one of them. I thought Rivoli looked awesome. He got a really good warm up, or he's getting a really good warm up on the track right now under Colby Hernandez. And uh, look, if he if you throw out his last race, which was on the synthetic, clearly he's not a synthetic horse. He was reeling off uh, three consecutive wins at Mahoning Valley. Now, yes, those races might have come up a little easier, but this horse just looks very strong on his toes. A lot of positive energy for him right now, and I love the warm-up that he got as well. So maybe keep an eye on the one Rivoli at 5-1. to one. As we trans transition to a different horse, the number seven, Holiday House, is the other horse that really caught my eye. Uh, Juan Cano actually claimed this horse several starts ago for 15000 He had a decent winter with him at Turfway. Comes in off of a really impressive win last time out. Maybe the drop in class helped him. This is a, a bit of a tougher race, but I think he can take that momentum and bring it back to the main track where he has decent figures. And he's just another one, too, that looked very fit coming into today's effort. Effort. So those are just two prices to maybe consider. But once again, I did think that the six Tilted Towers looked great today. And on paper, he simply is the horse to beat. Five to two, not a bad price as we are four minutes out from the opener.
Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's first race, start of the early pick five. Moving into line for the first. One for Richie coming forward. Now Coyote Road. Spycraft will be the last to load. Last one going in. At the post. And they're off. Spycraft on the far outside is out for the lead with Tilted Towers showing some early speed here as well. Figure Ready moves up to join them. And Figure Ready, a lane off the rail up now to challenge Tilted Towers for the top spot. Spycraft third. Rivoli is fourth down toward the inside and is joined there by Holiday House. Holiday House moves up from the fifth position as they go on to the far turn. A gap of four more lengths back to one for Richie near the back of the pack along with Coyote Road and then Deb's Gunfighter who's wide and last as the field moves on to the far turn. 22.38 seconds with the time for the opening quarter. Tilted Towers leading figure ready. Tilted Towers leads it by three lengths off the turn. Figure ready, second a quarter mile to go, then a gap of three more back to Spycraft, who's third up on the outside, followed by Holiday House, who's fourth back toward the inside. Tilted Towers, a five-length lead, an eighth of a mile to go. Figure ready is still second on the outside, then a gap of nearly five more back to Spycraft. Tilted Towers at the sixth. 16th pole still has the lead by better than four and tilted towers with Jareth Loveberry aboard wins the opener at Keeneland figure ready home second spycraft was across the line in third and then Rivoli came late from the outside to grab fourth. Tilted Towers, the old eight-year-old, still in prime form. He was lugging in a little bit coming down the lane, but jockey Jareth Loveberry did a phenomenal job keeping this horse at bay, keeping his mind on the task at hand, and he was just so much to the class today. He broke out of the gate really well, maintained that forward position, and wins this race by a couple of lengths in the end. It's going to be 6-2-10-1, unofficially across the finish line for today's opener. The unofficial results of Keeneland's first race, number six, Tilted Towers, finished first. Number two, Figure Ready, was second. Number ten, Spycraft, third. Number one, Rivoli, was fourth. Six, two, ten, one, unofficial.
In the winner's circle for Keeneland's first race, number six, Tilted Towers, owned by Marsico Brothers Racing. Jonathan Lewis Jr., Lewis III, and Michael Marsico, trained by Brittany Vandenberg, and Jareth Loveberry is the winning jockey. Tilted Towers, an eight-year-old gelted son of Atreides, out of Rich Love by Not for Love, bred in Kentucky by John Liviakis. Six furlongs over the main track, listed fast, one minute, 10.39 seconds. First race, results official, 6 2 10, one, the official results. Keeneland second race upcoming, double and pick three wagering, start of the early pick four. In this second race, scratch the five, modern day warrior. Scratch 13, unreasonable and scratch 15, glamorous. A reminder, number 14, Master of the Night draws into the race. 14, Master of the Night will run. Change of equipment for the one, Liquor Talk blinkers on. One, Liquor Talk, change of equipment blinkers on today. Since this starts the early pick four, a reminder that race number five is the race that comes off the turf. A reminder, race five is the race which comes off the turf. It goes a mile and a sixteenth on the main track. The stakes races remain on the turf. Seven and nine, those races remain on the turf. At Keeneland, please note the condition of the main track has been changed to muddy. The condition of the main track at Keeneland is now listed muddy.
Field is in the paddock for the second race today at Keeneland Racecourse. They're going to be eventually heading out to the main track at the distance of seven furlongs. And do take note that the main track has been downgraded to muddy. The, da the main track has been downgraded to muddy as it does continue to rain slightly here in Lexington, Kentucky. Hopefully this passes by quickly because we have an excellent card. Uh, especially with our featured event later today, the grade one makers mark mile on the turf. But this race originally carded for the dirt, so we will head out there. It's a maiden $20,000 claiming race. The six, Sharp Shot, right now is your heavy favorite. I did pick this one on top. I just think with the class relief, it's going to make this horse pretty hard to beat. Not only is he just dropping in class from maiden special weight company to the maiden $20,000 level, but he's also coming out of very strong maiden special weight races at Turfway. For example, two starts back, Epic Ride. That's who he had to face. He had to face Epic Ride when he broke his maiden. Obviously, Epic Ride would come back uh, to run really well in the Pataglia. And then, obviously, he finished in the top four in the grade one Toyota Bluegrass for trainer John Ennis. So, uh, this is a big class relief for this horse. I did not try to get creative here. I went with him on top. But let's talk about some alternatives if you're feeling the need to go against this favorite. The 12 Erasmus is one of them for trainer T Tommy Drury. I think this horse will benefit from a little added distance. When you look at his best race on form, it was going a mile at Belterra over the sloppy sealed track. He lost to a pretty decent horse who would go on to win in his subsequent start. So two things that I've noticed is that he's a little bit better going a little longer than just six furlongs. And he also proved that he could handle a track with a little moisture in it. Obviously, the muddy track will come into play today, but he's going to look for a closing kick under Brian Hernandez Jr. And then finally, the number nine, K. Broncho, is another one that I wanted to use because I saw a big improvement with this horse last time out. I'm not sure why. He did have a bad trip two starts back, but prior to that, he kind of just seemed a little on the slow side, probably a horse that needed a class relief. Maybe that race came up a little easier than your average maiden claiming race at Oakland, but whatever it it was I saw a big improvement and it attracts the likes of jockey Tyler Gaffleone so I thought this was a horse that you could certainly consider here and he should be able to get a mid-pack trip a couple of other ways to go I'll take a closer look at some of these contenders and report trackside in for just a few moments but we are 19 minutes out from the second race good luck
Looking ahead to Keeneland's fourth race. Please note, in race four, contrary to the program, number eight, Abedin, is a gelding. Keeneland's fourth race, contrary to the program, number eight, Abedin, is a gelding. Looking ahead to Keeneland's third race. Overweight in the third race, number six, Spencer's boy Luna, the chalky three pounds over. That's in Keeneland's third race, number six, Spencer's boy Luna, the chalky three pounds over.
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's second race. Maiden claiming race, $20,000 the claiming price. Three-year-olds and up, seven furlongs over the main track listed muddy. In race two, scratch the five, Modern Day Warrior. Also scratch number 13, Unreasonable. And scratch the 15, Glamorous. A reminder, number 14 will run. 14, Master of the Night, draws into the race, Santo Sanjur, the jockey. Double and pick three wagering, start of the early pick four. A reminder, as we look ahead to the conclusion of this pick four series, that fifth race, race number five, is off the turf. Just a reminder that race five is the race that comes off the turf. It goes a mile and a sixteenth on the main track. Again, we do remain on the turf for the stakes racing later today in races seven and nine. Post time on race two, seven minutes away. Looking at these horses on the track, I will say that the six and the nine physically look like standouts, but those are the horses that are first and second in the wagering. So let's get a little creative here. I'll throw in a price. The four, no break needed. He did make a nice appearance. I just can't really say anything about his debut. It was a slow pace. There's no doubt about that. And he found himself really far off the pace and was not able to really make up any ground from there. But he's a big, sizable looking gelding here on the track. Uh, physically looks great as well for trainer Barbie, Bobby Barnett. So if you're looking for a horse to maybe throw into the mix at a big price, look to the four no break needed at 17 to one. But like I said, the six and the nine, they both looked great on track. So we'll see what happens as horses continue their warmups prior to race two. We're six minutes out. Good luck.
Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's second race, start of the early pick four. Moving into line, race two. No break needed, and also, if I were you, coming forward. High alert moves into line. Master of the night will be the last one. Goes in, they're at the post. And they're off. There goes Sharp Shot. Sharp Shot out for the lead. If I Were You is there upon the outside. Elm Street comes forward. K. Broncho away fourth. Master of the Night moves up from fifth on the outside. Erasmus starts to kick in. Extreme outside into the sixth position. High Alert is away running in seventh. Battle Born is eighth down toward the inside. No break needed is ninth. Shannon Run is in the tenth spot. Port Royal is a wide eleventh. Liquor Talk is last of the twelve. And Sharp Shot is the leader. Opening quarter 23.03 seconds. Sharp Shot on top a length and a half to the far turn. Elm Street second ahead. Master of the Night is third up on the outside. High Alert is in behind horses in fourth. Battleborn fifth between horses. K. Broncho is three wide around the far turn from sixth to fifth to fourth. Still running four lengths off the lead. Sharp Shot leads at a length. Master of the Night goes second. Takes toward the outside. A gap of two to K. Broncho in third. Elm Street has lost ground in fourth. High Alert fifth. Battleborn is sixth toward the outside now but still eight lengths from the front. They turn for home. Sharp Shot leading Master of the night. Master of the night outside. Sharp shot inside. K. Broncho is third and still five lengths away from that front pair. Battleborn is still eight lengths from the front. Sharp shot the leader into the final furlong and Sharp shot has the lead out to three to four. Master of the night is second. K. Broncho in third. No break needed toward the inside. Moves up to fourth but well behind Sharp shot. Sharp shot. Axel Concepcion to win it. Be close for second across the wire. It was Master of the Night second by a head over K. Broncho third and no break needed fourth. Sharp shot was bet down to three to five, and he certainly won like a three to five shot here. He looked like he might have been in jeopardy here as uh, a horse kind of came up to his flank, but then he kicked back into gear, splashing home over this muddy sealed track, and he kicks home clear in the end, winning by multiple lengths. You can see the second and third place finishers well far back as it does look like the inside hangs on for second. But three to five, your winner in the second.
The unofficial results of Keeneland's second race, number six, Sharp Shot, finished first. Number 14, Master of the Night, second. Number nine, K. Broncho, third. Number four, no break needed, fourth. Six, 14, nine, four, unofficial. Race two, results official, 6 14, nine, four, the official results. In the winner's circle for Keeneland's second race, the official winner, number six, Sharp Shot, owned by Cali Met Farm of Brad Kelly, the trainer Brad Cox, the chalky Axel Concepcion. Sharp Shot, a three-year-old son of Sharp Azteca, out of weekend prospect by APND, the winner bred in Kentucky by Cali Met Farm. Seven furlongs over the main track listed muddy, one minute 25.09 seconds. Keeneland and Maker's Mark Kentucky Bourbon are proud to launch Greats of the Gate, a 10-year commemorative bottle series celebrating Thoroughbred Racing's most iconic horses with artwork created by Tyler Robertson. This series will raise a total of $4 million for various Kentucky nonprofit organizations. The inaugural bottle will arrive this year in October and will honor the legendary Man of War. Proceeds in 2024 will go to support Kentucky Harvest, Art Center of the Bluegrass, and Bluegrass Farms Charities, who are with us today, respectively represented by Heather Stewart, Nikki Kincaid, and Julie Kwasniewski. Maker's Mark, represented by Rob Samuels, Managing Director, and Keeneland, represented by Shannon Orban, President and CEO, are pleased to recognize the invaluable contributions these organizations make across Kentucky. Keeneland's third race upcoming, double and pick three wagering featured here. The main track is listed muddy. In this third race, scratch the five, Barber Road. Again, scratch five, Barber Road. A reminder, the overweight, number six, Spencer's boy, Luna. The jockey is three pounds over. Looking ahead, a reminder, race five is the race that comes off the turf. Race five off the turf, a mile and a sixteenth on the main track, in that one. Stakes races remain on the turf, seven and nine. Races seven and nine, the two stakes races remain on the turf.
At Keeneland, the condition of the main track has been changed to sloppy. Condition of the main track has been changed to sloppy. The turf is listed yielding for races 7 and 9. Horses in the paddock for the third race here at Keeneland. They will be heading out to the main track at the distance of a mile and an eighth. And do take note that the main track has now been downgraded to sloppy and sealed as the rain continues to come down here in Lexington, Kentucky. So certainly want to pay attention to those horses who have done well on a wet track before in the past. Or if they've never had an experience on the wet track 
try to look into their pedigree to see if they're related to any horses who have done well on a wet track or those stallions who have produced horses that like a wet track. The number one, Pyrenees, well, he likes a wet track. He broke his maiden on it last time out. That was down at the fairgrounds over a muddy sealed track. Now, I will admit that this race... This racetrack might be a little bit more sloppy than what he won on last time out. So there's always that degree of the unknown. But he's by Into Mischief. Into Mischief's, uh, Into Mischief's can literally run on anything. They can run, run on wet dirt tracks, fast dirt tracks. They can run at six furlongs, a mile and a quarter. Wherever you put them, they're going to do well. He definitely looks like the progeny of an Into Mischief. He's turned it around in the last two starts. I'm not sure why some of his races last year, they weren't great against Maiden Special Weight Company. At one point, it didn't even look like he was going to break his maiden against Maiden Special Weight Company. But he came back in a really big way this winter at the fairgrounds, and I think he can take that momentum against two other than Allowance Company today. The number seven horse, Tall Boy, is another one I wanted to mention. Three to one right now for trainer Doug O'Neill. And my only issue with him is that he just seems to take a long time to get going. And with horses that that's the case for, I think they have an easier go of it on a surface like the turf. His last win came on the turf at Churchill Downs. It just They seem to handle the ground a little bit better when they have that kind of turn of foot and they take a long time to get going on the turf. So we'll see what he can do on the main track. But he has gone against really tough competition on the main track. One of those races was last year in the grade two Pat Day Mile on Derby weekend. So he is getting a class relief from his prior dirt races and he comes into the race off of a good second place finish last time out. And then finally, we get to the number two, the Prince's Spur. Uh, This is a horse that figures to take a little bit of money. Phil Bauer has sent out a handful of horses here at the meet so far, and they've all run really well. Kind of seems like the barn has pointed for this meet. And uh, he comes out of a good race last time. I just don't like the fact that he got through his first level allowance win through a disqualification. I think it's always hard. Now he's thrown into the deep end against two other than allowance winners, even though he didn't necessarily cross the finish line first last time out. And sometimes you want to play that common horse comparison. Well, he lost to Brigadier Commander last time out. Pyrenees beat that same horse by two and a quarter. So that just goes to show you in comparison maybe where one is versus the other. But the two, the Princess Spur, I do think merits respect for the top three. He's on the board at seven to two. Let's look at just three contenders. We'll get a couple, a closer look at some of these horses as they go postward, and we'll report back in a minute. We're 14 minutes out from race three.
Looking ahead to Keeneland's seventh race, the FanDuel Limestone. Please note race seven has been taken off the turf. Please note Keeneland's seventh race, the FanDuel Limestone has been taken off the turf and will be contested at five and a half furlongs on the main track. And the main track is listed sloppy. So race five is off the turf. Race seven is off the turf. The featured ninth race, the Maker's Mark Mile, remains on the turf, which is listed yielding. The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's third race. The Bally Rankin, allowance optional claiming race, $80,000 claiming price, four-year-olds and up, mile and an eighth. Main track is listed sloppy. Double and pick three wagering, scratch the five, Barber Road. Scratch the five, Barber Road. Overweight, the six, Spencer's boy, Luna, the jockey, three pounds over. Looking ahead, a reminder, we are off the turf in race five, and we are off the turf in race seven. The featured ninth race remains on the turf. Main track is sloppy. Post time at six minutes.
a closer look at the number three cyclone mischief sent out by trainer Dale Romans. I've always thought that this is a beautiful looking horse. He's just flashy. He's got that big white blaze on his head. He has those two big white socks on his front legs as well. I think he has four white socks, actually, but you can't really see because he's got hind bandages on today. But a beautiful horse, and at one point in time, this horse probably would have been the heavy favorite in this race. He competed in the Holy Bull, the Fountain of Youth. He actually finished third against Forte in that event, and then third in the Grade 1 Florida Derby last year against Forte and your eventual Kentucky Derby winner in Mage. So the class is there. Now, he did have a bad trip last time out, and the Fred Hooper coming in off of a layoff. He didn't really run that well. Two starts back in November. And Churchill, his races have been very spotty as of late. And I've always thought he's a really big body type of horse. He probably takes a lot of work to get him fit and race ready in the afternoon. So I actually like that he has one race under the belt. I don't know how much fitness he got out of it because it just was a disaster of a race, but I hope it did give him some fitness and maybe a little bit tighter for this event today. Uh, beautiful horse. He looks like he's in good condition. Sometimes I have difficulty liking horses that are this big on these sloppy tracks because sometimes they just have a tendency to sink into it versus skip over the top of the surface. So that would be my only concern. He's never tried a sloppy track before. He's bred to handle it, but just keep that in mind. Beautiful looking horse on the track, though. The four, Baba Voss, is the other horse I wanted to mention for trainer Brendan Walsh. He comes in off of a victory last time out, actually on the dirt but it was an off-the-turf event. I thought that allowance race came up a little on the easy side, all considering it was an off-the-turf race, and physically, he still kind of looks like that turf type of horse. He's a son of Empire Maker. He has Scat Daddy on the bottom side, so I'm a little bit dubious when it comes to that, but he looks very well on the track today, and it looks like he's wintered uh, he, he had a really good winter down there at the fairground, so maybe he can go back-to-back back here, but this is a much tougher race that he will have to go against today at 7-2. to two. This is an interesting group of horses. I do like the one Pyrenees, but you know I do think you can shop for better prices in here as well as he is the 9-5 to five favorite. We are three minutes out from the third. Good luck. Looking ahead to Keeneland's seventh race, the FanDuel Limestone. A reminder, race seven now is off the turf. It will be contested on the main track. In that seventh race, some late scratches. Scratch the 10, Crimson Advocate. Scratch the 11, Tupi. And scratch the 12, Amidst Waves. Race seven, the FanDuel Limestone. Off the turf, it will be contested on the main track. Late scratches, scratch the 10, Crimson Advocate, scratch the 11, Tupi, scratch the 12, Amidst Waves. A reminder, number one, Nice as Pie, is also scratched from that race. Number 13, Extreme Diva, is also a scratch in that race. And keep in mind, the 14, Hot Beach, draws into the race. 14, Hot Beach, will run. Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's third race, the Bally Rankin. Looking ahead to Keeneland's seventh race, the FanDuel Limestone. Late scratch in that race, scratch number three, Pipsy. Again, that's looking ahead to race seven, the FanDuel Limestone. Scratch number three, Pipsy. Our focus now is race three. The horses have reached the starting gate for the third race and are moving into line.
cyclone mischief coming forward. Now Baba Voss, two more to load. Here is Spencer's boy, Luna. Tall boy, the last one. Last one goes in at the post. third race is underway. Here comes Cyclone Mischief, and here comes Pyrenees. Pyrenees and Cyclone Mischief come out to buy for the lead. Tallboy is away running in third up on the outside. The Prince's Spur is out running in fourth, and then Baba Voss, who is fifth down toward the inside, and Spencer's Boy Luna, last of the six, as they make the move around the first turn. Pyrenees, the leader. Pyrenees, along the rail, leads at three quarters of a length, and Cyclone Mischief goes second toward the outside. The Prince's Spur, a close-up third against the rail, and then Tall Boy, who's toward the outside and fourth, two lengths off the lead and inching forward, now taking third and now just a half length from second. And then there's a gap of three more lengths back to Baba Voss, who is next to last. Spencer's Boy Luna is another six lengths behind that when they've reached the midpoint of the backstretch. Pyrenees, the leader, Cyclone Mischief alongside. Tall Boy joins them on the far outside. Then the Prince's Spur back toward the rail. It was 48.61 seconds the time for the first half mile. Over to the far turn, Cyclone Mischief is right alongside of Pyrenees. That's the battle for the lead. The Prince's Spur is third against the rail, right behind that front pair. Tall Boy has lost ground into fourth. Baba Voss is moving by takes fourth to the inside of that one as they round the far turn and still Spencer's boy Luna is last as they make the move toward the quarter pole Cyclone Mischief on the outside of Pyrenees contesting the lead to the top of the stretch they turn for home and now the challenge from the Prince's Spur. The Prince's Spur swings off the rail, but is still four lengths away from Pyrenees. And Pyrenees comes by the eighth pole, maintains the advantage so far. The Prince's Spur is second now, still some three and a half lengths off the leader. Pyrenees, the Prince's Spur, will have to settle for second. Pyrenees wins it for Brian Hernandez Jr. The Prince's Spur was home in the second spot in this afternoon's third race. What a race that this horse gives us today. Pyrenees with the victory for trainer Sharita Vo. Brian Hernandez Jr. aboard today. Came in fresh off of the layoff. Hadn't seen this horse since January. It was also a clocker pick. This horse had been running really well. He took a little bit of early pressure from the three Cyclone Mischief. He brushed that off, came out to about the four or five path and gets an easy victory. We see the number two, the Princess Spur, picking up the pieces late to get second. One, two, three across the finish line for race three. Unofficial results, Keeneland's third race. Number one, Pyrenees finished first. Number two, the Prince's Spur was second. Number three, Cyclone Mischief third. Number six, Spencer's Boy Luna was fourth. One, two, three, six. Unofficial.
In the winter circle for Keeneland's third race, the Valley Rankin, number one, Pyrenees, owned by Blue Heaven Farm of Adam Korndorf and Bonnie Baskin, trained by Cherie DeVoe, Brian Hernandez, Jr., is the jockey. Pyrenees, a four-year-old son of Into Mischief out of Our Christie by Newfoundland, bred in Kentucky by Blue Heaven Farm. Mile and an eighth over the main track listed sloppy, one minute 50.79 seconds. Third race results official. One, two, three, six, the official results. In the winter circle, the Ballet Rank and Trophy presentation to the connections of Pyrenees. Keeneland's fourth race upcoming, featuring double and pick three wagering. The main track is listed sloppy. In the fourth race, scratch number three, Filio Del Rey. Also scratch number four, Moro. A reminder, the jockey for the seven, Aged Truth, will be Joel Rosario. Joel Rosario, the jockey for the seven, Aged Truth. Contrary to the program, number eight, Abedin, is a gelding. Number eight, Abedin, is a gelding. A reminder, we are off the turf in race five. We are also off the turf in race seven. The featured ninth race, the Maker's Mark Mile, that one remains on the turf.
Looking at the field here, coming up next is race four. Uh, pick three wagering is available. Double exacta trifecta as well as seven furlongs on the main track. T main track is listed as sloppy right now. It's an $80,000 claiming race for horses who have never won two races in their lifetime. The two Harrodsburg opens up as the four to five favorite. And I do simply think that this is the horse to beat. Now, he does have some things to overcome. This is his first start as a three-year-old or as a four-year-old, excuse me. He did face older horses last year. He faced three-year-olds and upward in an allowance race at Belmont. Then he finished second in, and then he came back to run in the grade three Dwyer, finishing third to Fort Bragg in that event. Saudi Crown also in there as well. That was a very good group of horses. So the question is, can he step up to the plate today after being lightly raced last year? Very impressive, but lightly raced, and then come back in today for 80,000 and go the distance of seven furlongs. Inside post positions over a heavy track, like today, um, you know, going seven furlongs off the layoff, it can be a little bit of an obstacle. But at the end of the day, I thought that his class would prevail. Let's take a look at some alternatives, though, if you do not agree with me. The eight, Abedin, is one horse that uh, I think you could definitely make a case for. He is another one, though, that is coming in off of a layoff. Haven't seen him since early November. And uh, he is now trained by Mike Maker, owned by Three Diamonds Farm. His last race wasn't great, but he lost to the likes of Money Supply. That was a very key race. The top three finishers would come back to win. Overall, it looked like he got into his better races from the jump, really. I thought his first race was really good, and he just kind of maintained from there. So I think that's a good indicator as to his readiness off of the layoff. Sometimes if we see horses be ready to run really well in their first couple of starts, it means that they can get themselves ready in the morning coming in off of layoffs, and that is the case for the eight. And then the 11 horse, Wicked again, at least this horse has recency. Steve Asmussen sent him down to Houston. Prior to that, he was running at Oaklawn Park. And he's not the most consistent, but I do think that some of those races that he was in, especially that race at Oaklawn, was tough. He ran against Bourbon Bash in there, happy as a choice. Those are graded stakes quality horses. So in many ways, this horse has recency, and he has a bit of a class relief. I thought this horse was really, really interesting at 9-2 to two, if you're looking to try to beat the favorite here. This number seven horse, Age Truth for Kyle Karamori and George Sharp. This is a runner that was a debut winner at Horseshoe Indianapolis by five months. Now, I know it was 10 months ago, but the way that he ran off the screen was very impressive. He's got some fast workouts here at Keeneland. He's got fast workouts on a wet, fast track here at Keeneland, which shouldn't hurt today with the moisture that we've gotten over the last couple of days. I know it's a cutback in distance. I know it's a step up in class, but I think he's caught the right type of field in this $80,000 claiming event, especially if Harrodsburg doesn't respond to this drop in class that he takes and coming off the nine-month layoff. I'll roll the dice with Age Truth, the seven here in race four. Thank you, Scott. And just take note that the seven age truth, there is a late rider change. Joel Rosario picks up the mount for Umberto Rispoli. So Joel Rosario on the number seven age truth, that lightly raced runner coming in off the layoff. It's a very interesting group of horses right now. So your favorite is the two Harrodsburg off the layoff last scene and the grade three Dwyer. We'll get a closer look at these horses as they will be going postward in 13 minutes.
Looking ahead to Keeneland's fifth race, that jockey change is now available for number 14, Spice. And the rider will be John Velasquez. Again, that's looking ahead. Race five, number 14, Spice. The jockey, John Velasquez. Horses are entering the track for Keeneland's fourth race. Three-year-olds end up with an $80,000 claiming prize. Seven furlongs over the sloppy main track. Double and pick three wagering featured here. In race four, scratch number three, Filio Del Rey. Also scratch number four, Moro. A reminder, the jockey for the seven aged truth is Joel Rosario. Joel Rosario rides the seven aged truth. And contrary to the program, number eight, Abedin is a gelding. Number eight, Abedin is a gelding. A reminder, looking ahead, we are off the turf in race five. We are also off the turf in race seven. Featured ninth race, the Maker's Mark Mile. That one remains on the turf course. Race four, five minutes away.
taking a closer look at these horses on the track, and we'll start off with the number two, Harrodsburg, as your current favorite. I just wanted to point out something just because this horse is such a heavy favorite that he kind of kept to himself in the paddock. He seems like a horse that is definitely has his quirks about him. Uh, you know, he kept to himself in the paddock. They saddled him on the walk. He obviously is doing just fine right now. And to be honest, all of the arrangements, the special arrangements they made for him in the paddock seem to help because he didn't turn a hair and he actually has been on his best behavior. Just something to maybe keep in mind, though, as we get closer to post time, if this horse does stay settled. Uh, but like I said, he hasn't done anything wrong as of late. Just a horse that a good feeling horse for sure. Uh, but he definitely seems like a horse that has a lot of raw ability, but maybe has a couple of quirks. Uh, we'll go to the outside, the way outside, the 11 wicket again. And as I was looking through the post parade, the two was kind of off on his own. The eight was really high energy. And obviously those are the two horses that are taking the bulk of the wagering right now. I keep liking this horse more and more. He has recency. He looks extremely fit. He has a good outside post position, having drawn, uh, you know, going seven furlongs in, in this race. He's effective going six and a half furlongs. He's been okay going seven furlongs. And he just looks great on the track for trainer Steve Asmussen. So the more I look at these horses on track, the more I fall in love with the 11 Wicked again. We'll see what he can do on the sloppy track. He's done well on a wet track before in the past. That was a muddy seal track at Oaklawn. He actually broke his maiden back in December on that type of surface. But that's the 11 Wicked again as horses continue to warm up for the fourth. The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's fourth race. Moving into line, race four.
as Medias moves into line. Flipperino coming forward, along with Kencio. Isitude will be next. Wicket again, the last one coming forward. Goes in, they're at the post. They're off. There goes Harrodsburg. Abedin has some early speed as well. Dazzle Me Silver is there to the inside. Harrodsburg is the leader. Starts to slide down closer to the rail. Has the lead by a length. Abedin, Dazzle Me Silver back toward the inside. And then Osmodias, who goes in the fourth position, just over two lengths off the lead. Wicked again, far outside, has lost a position or two. Settles back toward the center of the pack in fifth. And there goes Age Truth moving by to the inside from sixth, along with Kencio from the seventh position. They head on to the far turn. Further back, Isitude is eighth. Flipperino is ninth. Harrodsburg is the leader, though, after an opening quarter, 22.09 seconds. Harrodsburg leading Abedin a length and a half. Dazzle Me Silver right there to the inside, but third around the far turn. And then Asmodeus, who travels in fourth, still five lengths off the lead as they work their way off the turn. Then there's a gap of seven more lengths back to Wicked again, just to the outside of Age Truth, that pair with running to do, along with Isitude, who's to their outside. Harrodsburg is the leader, Abedin to the outside of that one, and then comes Asmodeus, who's out in the center of the racetrack, but coming to the eighth pole, Harrodsburg has a five-length margin. Harrodsburg into the final furlong, the leader. Asmodeus is second up on the outside, and is followed by Abedin back toward the inside in third. Harrodsburg has this one wrapped up for Irad Ortiz Jr., Harrodsburg, the winner. Asmodeus was home second, Abedin was third, and Isitude came on to get fourth. The easiest of wins here for the two Harrodsburg. He was bet down as the three to five favorite. He certainly won like a three to five favorite, just drawing clear from the rest of the field. Coming down the stretch, Irad Ortiz Jr. showing him the whip just a couple of times, but just keeping his him at his task today and getting a very easy win. Ears forward as he crosses the finish line. The five comes in second at nine to one. The eight comes in third at Five to one, two, five, eight across the finish line, unofficially for race four. Unofficial results of Keeneland's fourth race. Number two, Harrodsburg was first. Number five, Asmodeus was second. Number eight, Abedin third. Number ten, Isitude fourth. Two, five, eight, ten, unofficial.
In the winter circle for Keeneland's fourth race, number two, Harrodsburg, owned by Twin Creeks Racing Stable LLC, of Stephen Davison and Randy Gallat, trained by Rob Attress, Irad Ortiz Jr., is the jockey, and the results are now official. Number two, Harrodsburg, a four-year-old gelded son of Constitution out of Gracer by exchange rate, bred in Kentucky by Twin Creeks Farm. Seven furlongs over the sloppy main track, one minute, 23.52 seconds. Again, the results are official, 25810, the official results. Keeneland's fifth race upcoming, double and pick three wagering, start of the pick six, no carryover. Also start of the Keeneland turf pick three, made up of races five, seven, and nine. But a reminder, the first two legs of that Keeneland turf pick three will now be main track races. The ninth remains on the turf. Race five, off the turf a mile and a sixteenth on the main track, no superfecta on race five. Scratch the one, Bell of Rights. Also scratch three, Modern Sound. Scratch four, Only Emotions. Scratch five, Royal Winter. Scratch the six, Smiling Ellie. Also scratch number eight, Summer in Tahoe. Scratch the 11, Kill Shave Beauty. Scratch 12, Calispera. Scratch 13, Expatriate. And scratch 15, Carlos Cause. A reminder, number 14, Spice draws into the race. The jockey will be John Velasquez. That's number 14, Spice, draws into the race. John Velasquez will be the jockey. Mile and a 16th main track. Track is listed sloppy. Short stretch here for race five. No superfecta.
Race five is coming up next as the field gets set and ready. And this race originally carded for the turf at a mile and a 16th. It will now run on the main track at the same distance. So a short stretch run to keep in mind. Plenty of scratches, but the 10 just better is the top selection for me and does open up as the four to five favorite right now. And you just have to look for dirt form in this off the turf event. And I see that with just better. I thought she actually ran really well first time out. She clearly has a pedigree that could suggest either surface, but she did improve dramatically in her second career start on the turf. As she had an outside post position on that day. She still uh, tried to get into position and just had that turn of foot on the turf to get her up in the nick of time under Corey Lannery. Frankie DeTore now aboard the 10 just better. And the one thing I do like about her dirt race, at least in her first race, was that she found herself more forwardly placed in her turf event. And it could have been because of the outside post position, but she found herself far off the pace. I don't think that can happen in this compact field on the dirt today, so I like to see that she possesses a little bit of speed in that dirt race. As we move along to the second selection, just to her inside is the number nine, Bella Cruella for Brian Williamson. And talk about speed. Well, this filly certainly has that. She went gate to wire last time out. She also was very quick uh, to the front in her last race as well. Both of those fractions in those races, a little bit on the slower side, but I think at this distance on the main track, she will find herself forwardly placed. I say this often, usually when we see horses show more speed in the afternoon, it leads to better performances, and the reverse can also apply when we see a horse that usually shows speed uh, start not showing that early speed the form tends to go as well. So I think this is a positive sign for the number nine, Bella Corella, that she's broken out of the starting gate really well. She's found herself forwardly placed, and I think she can transition that back to the main track today. And then the 14 Spice, don't forget this horse does draw in off the AE, and Johnny Velasquez picks up the call, too, for Michael McCarthy. This filly only has one start on the main track. It was at Del Mar last September. She didn't really do much running in that event. I do think she improved getting to the synthetic and then ultimately the turf, but she is a filly that should be able to uh, at least chase the pace here uh, in the early stages of the race. Four to one seems like a fine price just because of all the scratches in here, but I do think that there's stronger form on some of the other fillies. We'll see what she can do, but she does. I think it's interesting that Mike McCarthy does decide to continue to run her, and we know what the sons and daughters of Into Mischief can do. I mentioned this earlier. It applied to several of our winners and uh, runners so far today. The sons and daughters of Into Mischief, they can literally run on anything and they tend to really like a wet main track. So that's the conditions that she gets today with the 14 Spice. She's 4-1 to one on the board. Horses will continue to get saddled up here for the next race. Race 5, jockeys will be legged up momentarily as well as we are 16 minutes out from the 5th race. This race does kick off the pick 6 and that Keeneland turf pick 3. Obviously this race isn't on the turf and the limestone uh, has been taken off the turf as well. So something to keep in mind. But we still have the grade one makers mark mile event later today that remains on the turf the turf is listed as yielding so race five going postward in 16 minutes good luck As a reminder, and as Gabby just referenced, the Keeneland Turf Pick 3 does begin here in race 5. It is made up of races 5, 7, and 9. The 5th race off the turf and the 7th race also off the turf. Race 9 remaining on the turf. But that Turf Pick 3 will be held on those three races. All surface changes were made prior to the running of this first leg here in race 5. Track condition is sloppy. The turf is yielding for the featured ninth race and the rail at zero feet on the turf course.
Horses are entering the track for Keeneland's fifth race, the Whisper Hill. This race comes off the turf, and it goes a mile and a sixteenth over the main track, which is listed sloppy. The race will finish in the short stretch of the first wire, an allowance for Phillies three years of age. No superfecta on this race, but there is double and pick three wagering. It's also the start of the pick six, no carryover, and it is the start of that Keeneland turf pick three made up of races five, seven, and nine. A reminder that this fifth race and also race seven have been taken off the turf. Race nine, the feature, remains on the turf. And again, that turf pick three will be held on those three races. All surface changes were made prior to the running of this first leg. In race five, scratch number one, Bell of Rights. Scratch number three, Modern Sound. Scratch the four, Only Emotions. The five, Royal Winter. And the six, Smiling Ellie. Also scratch 8, Summer in Tahoe, scratch 11, Killshave Beauty, 12, Calispera, 13, Expatriate, and scratch the 15, Curlow's Cause. A reminder, the 14 draws into the race, number 14, Spice, the jockey, John Velasquez. Post time is 6 minutes.
horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's fifth race, the Whisper Hill, a mile and a sixteenth on the main track. Start of the pick six, start of the Keeneland turf pick three, races five, seven, and nine, race five and race seven, both to be contested on the main track. Moving into line, race five. NZ goes into the gate. Perloin comes forward. Here's Bella Cruella. Two more to load. Just better. That will leave Spice the last one. Last one goes in. First wire at the post. They're off. There goes Bella Cruella. Bella Cruella right out for the early lead. Just better comes away second. Spice comes out running third upon the outside. Perloin quickly slides down to the inside in the fourth position. And NZ last of the five as they make the move into the first turn. Bella Cruella, the early leader. Bella Cruella against the rail, leads it by a length. Just Better goes second by a length. Spice third, two lanes off the rail around the first turn as they head for the back stretch. And then Perloin back toward the inside, travels along in fourth and is flanked at the back of the pack by Enzi, who's fifth, 24.26 seconds. The time for the opening quarter. Just Better now pokes ahead in front as they make the move up the back stretch. It is just better to the outside and Bella Cruella to the inside. Those two now matching strides midpoint of the back stretch. Then a gap of three and a half more lengths back to Perloin. Now Perloin moves up one position against the rail into third. Then Enzi is fourth and neck on the outside and Spice is last of the five but still right there. 48.28 seconds. That was the time for the first half mile. Over to the far turn. Just better from the outside. Again comes forward and now takes the lead a half length. Just better. The leader Bella Cruella now a length behind her in second. Then a gap of three to Perloin in third as they come to the quarter pole. A gap of nine more lengths back to Enzi. Five back of that one to Spice. Coming to the top of the short stretch. Just better. Has opened up here on an eight length lead. Perloin is second. Bella Cruella to her outside is in third. It is just better working into the final furlong. Has the lead by six lengths. Back to Perloin who's second by three. Bella Cruella third. Just better. Just under a sixteenth to go here. Just better. Frankie DeTore aboard and just better. Much the best here. It was Perloin home second. Then it was Bella Cruella third, Enzi was fourth, and Spice was fifth.
The unofficial results of Keeneland's fifth race, number 10, just better, finished first. Number seven, Purloin, was second. Number nine, Bella Cruella, third. Number two, NZ, was fourth. 10, seven, nine, two, unofficial. In the winter circle for Keeneland's fifth race, the Whisper Hill, number 10, Just Better. Owned by Whisper Hill Farm LLC of Mandy Pope, trained by Steve Asmus and the jockey Frankie Dottori. Just Better, three-year-old filly by Justify, out of Better, Better, Better by Galileo, bred in Kentucky by Whisper Hill Farm LLC. Mile at a 16th over the main track listed sloppy, 1 minute 46.26 seconds. Race 5, results official. 10 7 9, 2, the official results. In the winter circle, the trophy presentation for the Whisper Hill Race 5. Congratulations to the connections of Just Better. Keeneland sixth race upcoming, double and pick three wagering, start of the late pick five. No scratches, no jockey changes in race six. Looking ahead, a reminder, race seven, the fan duel limestone comes off the turf. It'll go five and a half furlongs on the main track. Race seven off the turf, it goes five and a half furlongs on the main track. The ninth race feature, the grade one maker's mark mile remains on the turf. Main track is sloppy, the turf for that ninth race listed yielding.
Race six, the beginning of the late pick five, 50 cent minimum wager. It will get underway in less than 18 minutes. We'll begin with a group of three-year-old fillies. They'll be going six and a half furlongs. And this is a maiden special weight worth $100,000. The current favorite is the two-horse Keo Beach for Wesley Ward. Johnny Velasquez will jump into the saddle. Now, this is a filly that was the favorite last time out in her debut at the end of January, January 31st. Not an overwhelming favorite, and she showed speed and got caught late in that race. My read on this race is that uh, they use this race to get ready for Keeneland, that race at Turfway Park. And I think that with Keo Beach and the speed that she possesses and the way that speed is getting over this sloppy main track here today. She's going to be just fine. And they paid quite a bit of money for her. $450,000 Keeneland September yearling graduate from 2022. Uh, I think that she'll be better than she was on debut. And that was not a bad race by any means. She just got tired late and ended up finishing fourth. So I'll lean on the speed of Keo Beach and the master craft that Wesley Ward displays each and every season here at Keeneland from a training perspective. And Keo Beach, we'll see if she can handle it here today. As far as the second choice, the number nine horse on command for Rusty Arnold, a nine to two. That is the second choice in the wagering. She was second on debut at Gulfstream Park. It ran a good debut race, and then last time out going seven eighths of a mile, maybe a touch too far. So sort of splitting the difference. That was a quickly run race, to be fair. I don't know that that maybe is a fair assessment, saying that seven eighths is not within the wheelhouse of this Omaha Beach filly. But she was beaten by a filly that uh, they paid a lot of money for. The filly that beat her in that last race at Gulfstream at the beginning of March, a filly by the name of Sedona, a seven-figure uh, purchase at her recent auction. So on command, the number nine horse with Jose Ortiz in the saddle. Square price at nine to two. She draws to the outside of that speed. This could be a very quickly run race because also May May Strong, the eight, has some early speed based on what she was able to do on her only race at Turfway Park at the end of February. And then the number four horse, that is song maker for Norm Cassie, 12 to one. Looking at the works, the way that she's worked down at Oaklawn Park, she's been wearing, working very swiftly. And Norm Cassie's done some good things with these sons and daughters of Birdsong through the years for the Mary Lou Whitney stables. Luis Saez in the saddle, gray filly, as you can see on the screen as she comes out of her saddling stall to take a lap around the paddock here and there's a look at norm getting ready to turn this one loose for the first time song maker we'll see how she fares off the works at hot in hot springs but i think worth a nod for the top three at the very least pick five pool is growing with less than 15 minutes to post nearing two hundred thousand dollars now over hundred and ninety thousand dollars don't forget the two stakes race is still to come race number seven if you have not heard if you're playing that late pick five the FanDuel limestone stakes has been taken off the turf course to be run on the main track the grade one makers mark mile remains on the turf as you can see at the top of your screen and the turf is yielding good luck in race number six
Horses are entering the track for Keeneland's sixth race, the Hasty House. Maiden special weight, three-year-old filly, six and a half furlongs over the main track listed sloppy. Double and pick three wagering start of the late pick five. No scratches, no jockey changes in race six. Looking ahead, a reminder, race seven comes off the turf. Race seven will be five and a half furlongs on the main track. The featured ninth race, the grade one makers, Mark Mile, remains on the turf. Main track is sloppy. The turf for that ninth race listed yielding. Post time in six minutes for the start of the late pick five. Race number six, now four minutes to post. This three has been feeling good. He's been on the muscle, not quite this much over in the paddock, but certainly picked it up since he's arrived on the main track for the warm-up before race number six. That is short skirts, who's 13 to one on the board right now for Shug McGahey, uh, has been working here at Keeneland, one published workout for the career debut. Got to appreciate the energy. He's not concerned with the off track and feeling fine over it at sitting at 12 to one. So just like the way that he was presenting himself from an energy perspective here in race number six. May May Strong, the eight horse for trainer Steve Asmussen. This is a filly by Munnings who was debuted at Turfway Park. She's a big stout filly, that's for sure. And Joelle Rosario gets the opportunity. She's live on the board right now at odds of five to one. We'll see if she can run uh, a little better than what she did last time out. And she was only beating a nose, but I think that she's going to have to come a little bit more uh, with it based on that race and the final time versus this group here today. But she's the daughter of Munnings, so the off track uh, shouldn't hurt her. 18% winners for the offspring of Munnings through the years, and she's feeling good out there on the track as well. And then time for Magic, a first-time starter for Vicki Oliver and G. Watts Humphrey Jr. Uh, gun runner. Again, leaning on that Candy Ride Sire line that we have talked about time and time and time again, whether it's Candy Ride himself or his sons that are standing at stud like Twirling Candy or Mastery, or in this instance, Gunrunner, who has taken it to another level, uh, bringing that Candy Ride Sire line to the forefront of the stallion game here in central Kentucky. Sons of Gunrunners, sons and daughters of Gunrunner, winning nearly a quarter of the time on and off track, 24% winners. That's about as high as you will find. It's not the sample size that we look at for some of the more established stallions that have stood at stud for a longer term, 
but you can't ignore the gun runner pedigrees on and off track. And this is a Philly that is sitting at 43 to one on the board right now with Martin Garcia in the saddle. There she is, pretty looking thing out of the mine shaft first dam, Mines and Magic, who is a stakes winner in her own right. The pick five pull is growing. $347,000 should be near 400,000, 500,000 once the dust settles and we have reached post time. Good luck with race number six here at Keeneland. The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's sixth race, the Hasty House, start of the late pick five. Moving into line, race six. Time for Magic coming forward. Songmaker, along with Marina Village, moving into line. Lots and lots of candy will go in next. Legal Deceiver comes forward. Bell of the Bluegrass will be the last one. Goes in, they're at the post. And they're off. Bell of the Bluegrass comes out for the early lead. Marina Village is right there on command. May May Strong away running in fourth position. Elegant Vision now comes out of a crowd. And Kehoe Beach. Here's Kehoe Beach up the inside to get the lead. Elegant Vision goes second. Songmaker is along the rail in third. May May Strong is fourth on command. Is a wide fifth to the far turn. Marina Village is sixth. Pretty Layla to the inside. Seventh. Bell of the Bluegrass broke well, but is now eighth and caught toward the far outside. Legal Deceiver ninth back toward the inside. Lots and lots of candy. 
His 10th short skirts, 11th time for Magic. His last of the 12, 21.62 seconds was the time for the opening quarter. Kehoe Beach to the inside, leads at three quarters of a length. Elegant Vision goes second and a gap of five more lengths on command. His third just outside of Songmaker in the fourth position. Bell of the Bluegrass is a wide sixth, nine lengths off the lead though. And then Pretty Layla back toward the inside. Kehoe Beach, the leader, as they swing off the far turn and leads it by three lengths and is followed by Elegant Vision and then on command and Bell of the Bluegrass and those two move as a team on the far outside but Kehoe Beach has a six length lead, a 16th to go and Kehoe Beach John Velasquez maintaining the advantage. Bell of the Bluegrass has gone to second but no catching. Kehoe Beach who wins it. Bell of the Bluegrass was home second. Songmaker third and Pretty Layla came up the inside for fourth. She was ready to roll today. Keo Beach for Thomas Bachman, Wesley Ward, Johnny Velasquez. She broke. She went to the lead. She got a bit of a breather midway through this race, and she was able to open up on this group, building off of that debut at Turfway Park. Another favorite here on this wet Friday afternoon, the Keeneland September Sale graduate from 2022 scores another one for Wesley Ward, daughter of Omaha Beach, flying under the wire. The unofficial results of Keeneland sixth race. Number two, Kehoe Beach was first. Number 12, Bell of the Bluegrass was second. Number four, Songmaker third. Number one, Pretty Layla fourth. 2 12 4 1, unofficial. Race six, results official in the winter circle for race six. The Hasty House, number two, Kehoe Beach, owned by Tom Bachman, trained by Wesley Ward, John Velasquez, the jockey. Kehoe Beach, the three year old filly by Omaha Beach, out of Sweet Awakening by Street Cry, bred in Kentucky by John Bates, Ron Kirk, and Michael Reardon. This Keeneland September graduate, Kehoe Beach, gets the six and a half furlongs over the main track, listed sloppy in one minute 17.59 seconds. Results are official 212 41, the official results.
In the Winter Circle, the Hasty House trophy presentation to the connections of Kehoe Beach. We direct your attention to the Winter Circle at this time. On behalf of Keeneland Association, President Shannon Arvin and Director of Sales Development Mark Morande are presenting a check for $25,000 to Stable Recovery. Stable Recovery offers a supportive living environment for men in early recovery, emphasizing peer-driven community and equine-related employment. Through their housing program, residents receive thoroughbred industry training at the School of Horsemanship at Taylor Made Farm and access to potential job placements in and around Lexington. Keeneland is proud to support Stable Recovery's dedication to the present and future welfare of the men in their program, establishing them as a vital asset to both the thoroughbred industry and the wider community. Keeneland's seventh race upcoming. Race seven, the FanDuel Limestone Stakes comes off the turf. Five and a half furlongs on the main track, which is listed sloppy. Double and pick three wagering is start of the late pick four. Scratch number one, nice as pie. Scratch number three, Pipsy. Also scratch the 10, Crimson Advocate. The 11, Toopy. The 12, Amidst Waves. And the 13, Extreme Diva. A reminder, number 14, Hot Beach draws into the race. 14, Hot Beach draws into the race. Jose Ortiz will ride. But that means there is a jockey change for the four, Zoe's Prime, Tyler Gaffalion. Number four, Zoe's Prime, the jockey, Tyler Gaffalion. Race seven, main track, five and a half furlongs. Keep in mind that ninth race feature, the Maker's Mark Mile, that one stays on the turf. Turf is listed yielding for that ninth race, the rail at zero feet.
Stakes action up next here at Keeneland Racecourse. Race number seven, 17 minutes to post. Now, once again, this race not compete, will not compete on the turf here today. They'll move it over to the sloppy main track as this is the FanDuel Limestone Stakes. And a fair amount of fillies remain in this race with it moving over to the main track. We're going to start with the number nine horse in here. That is Foxy Cleopatra for Patricia's Hope and Richard Raven. This is a filly by Munnings that they purchased for $305,000 at the two-year-old sale last year, and she has not disappointed so far in her two starts. Two races, two wins. She's won on synthetic. She's won on turf. She'll try the main track here today. And a daughter of Munnings, I don't think we'll have an issue with handling this main track here this afternoon. She's five to two right now as the second choice for trainer Larry Ravelli. She beat Tipsy Runner in her last race, and that is a filly that beat Big Trouble, the number eight horse. So that common common foe run line between the eight and nine in here. But expect this filly to show speed. And as we have seen, Speed is doing very well on this sloppy track here today. Five to two on Foxy Cleopatra, looking to stay perfect in her third career start. The number four horse, Zoe's Prime for Jose Camejo, three to one. She's vying for that second choice spot as she's not far off the nine. But Zoe's Prime is a filly by Bolt Doro, who broke her maiden on the turf down at Fairgrounds in a maiden optional 50 and shows up here today in and amongst stakes company with Tyler Gaffleone in the saddle. That is a rider change on Zoe's Prime. She's got some speed to her as well. We'll see how she handles the off track. And she's got dirt pedigree as well. Bolt Doro on top into mischief on the dam side. She certainly looks like she's better suited perhaps with it moving off the turf course even though she did win on grass considering the competition that has dropped out of this race if it was to remain on the turf course and then the number 14 who gets the opportunity to draw in off the also eligible two to one on the board on hot beach for brian lynch this is a filly by omaha beach who comes off the five-month layoff and was last seen finishing second in the Myrtlewood behind You Almost Had Me, that talented filly for Resolute Racing and trainer Brad Cox and Jose Ortiz. This was his first preference to ride this filly here today, and that's why you have that rider change on Zoe's prime to Tyler Gaffleone in that situation. But nonetheless, Hot Beach, she is... Not seen nothing but fast main tracks. She's only competed on the main track, so she'll see how she handles the off track here today and certainly live on the tote board at odds of two to one in the Fanduel Limestone. I go to the eight big trouble as the top selection here. I really thought this filly improved in her second start. She was just fine first time out, but she improved big time in her subsequent start. To win a turf sprint by four and a quarter just speaks to her talent and how she dominated that group last time out. It produced several next out winners, including Zoe's Prime, who's also in this race. So I look for another big step forward for the eight big trouble. We're less than 14 minutes away from the FanDuel Limestone Stakes. Three-year-old Phillies will be competing on the sloppy main track. Starts the late pick four. A reminder once again that the grade one makers mark mile will run on the turf course, which is listed as yielding. Less than 14 minutes to post before our first of two stakes on this Friday afternoon at Keeneland.
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's seventh race, the fifth running of the FanDuel Limestone Stakes, three-year-old fillies in a stakes which comes off the turf and will go five and a half furlongs over the main track, which is listed sloppy. Double and pick three wagering start of the late pick four. Scratch the one, nice as pie. Scratch number three, Pipsy. Also scratch the 10, Crimson Advocate, the 11, Toopy, the 12, Amidst Waves, the 13, Extreme Diva also scratched. A reminder, number 14, Hot Beach, draws into the race. Jose Ortiz will be the jockey, but there is a jockey change on the four. Zoe's prime, Tyler Gaffalione. Tyler Gaffalione rides the four. Let's meet the starters for the FanDuel Limestone, five and a half furlongs main track. We begin with number two, Midnight Angel, owned by Twin Oaks LLC, of trainer Eric Alexander Torres, the jockey, Isaiah Sayala. Three is scratched. Four is Zoe's Prime, owned by Chris Alds and Keith Johnston, trained by Jose Camejo. The jockey is Tyler Gaffalione. Five, Kodiak Wintergreen, owned by Bregman Family Racing LLC of Alex Bregman, trained by Rusty Arnold. The jockey, Luis Saez. Number six, Antique Silver, owned by Three Diamonds Farm of Kirk Wyckoff. The trainer, Mike Maker, the jockey, Joel Rosario. Seven, Gravette, owned by Upland Flats Racing of Patrick Lewis, trained by Jamie Begg. Luan Machado will ride. Eight, Big Trouble, owned by the Donemeyer Farm of Myra Ball, trained by Greg Foley, the jockey Brian Hernandez, Jr. Nine, Foxy Cleopatra, owned by Richard Raven and Patricia's Hope, LLC, of Vince Folia, trained by Larry Ravelli, the jockey Jareth Loveberry. And number 14, Hot Beach, owned by the Board Short Stables LLC of Travis Borsma, trained by Brian Lynch and the jockey Jose Ortiz. Post time, less than five minutes. Less than five minutes away from the FanDuel Limestone Stakes. I know this filly is 28 to 1, but she is a pretty filly, and she's got her neck bowed. She's feeling good. She's yet to win a race. This is a big swing that they're taking, but I just like the way that she looked. 28 to 1 on Midnight Angel. Just purchased for a $2,500 purchase price back in 2022 as a yearling, and we'll see how she fares here today. This is just simply based on looks. I know she's lacking the form when you take a look at it, and that's why she's 29 to 1, but a well-put-together filly by West Coast out of the first dam, Pike Creek. And then the number eight horse, Big Trouble. You heard Gabby comment on this Cantheros filly. She is a beautiful filly as well. She's currently sitting at nine to one on the board as it stands. I think that she's built to handle the dirt. Just looking at her, she is a big stout filly. I don't think that this transition will bother her whatsoever under Brian Hernandez Jr. It's a very competitive race and Hot Beach has moved into the eight to five favorites role. The number 14 horse for Brian Lynch. She doesn't quite have the size that the eight horse does, but a tall, leggy filly for board short stables. We'll see how she handles this off going here today. The late pick four quickly approaching $200,000 with the Maker's Mark Miles still to come. This is the Fandle Limestone Stakes getting underway in less than four minutes right here at Keeneland.
Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's seventh race, fifth running of the FanDuel Limestone Stakes at five and a half furlongs on the main track. Start of the late pick four. Moving into line, race seven. Foxy Cleopatra and Kodiak Wintergreen moving into line. Antique Silver comes forward. Hot Beach will be the last to load. Comes forward now. Moves into line. They're at the post. And they're off in the FanDuel Limestone Stakes, and there goes Hot Beach from the far outside. Quick into stride and clears the inside traffic in the blink of an eye. Hot Beach goes right to the front. Zoe's Prime comes away second. Antique Silver is away third between horses. And then comes Midnight Angel down to the inside and fourth. Foxy Cleopatra is going to be caught wide from fifth onto the far turn. And then further back, Kodiak Wintergreen, who's down to the inside, moves up one spot from sixth into fifth. Antique Silver drops back one position behind her as they round the far turn. Big trouble is seventh. Gravette, last of the eight. Hot Beach is the leader. The opening quarter went in 22.24 seconds. Hot Beach is chased by Zoe's Prime. Three lengths between them. Quarter mile to go. Gap of five. Back to Midnight Angel. Here comes Zoe's Prime on the outside, but still has to catch Hot Beach. Hot Beach has the lead at the eighth pole. Has it by two. Zoe's Prime is second. A gap of five to Kodiak Wintergreen in third. Hot Beach is in front just over a sixteenth to go. Hot Beach, Jose Ortiz aboard. Main Maintain the advantage. It's out to four lengths now, and Hot Beach will win the FanDuel Limestone Stakes. Zoe's Prime was across the line in second. Kodiak Wintergreen was home third, and then it'll be close for fourth. Big Trouble or Antique Silver for that fourth spot. Well, she won this one at the start. Hot Beach in the blink of an eye opened up on this field and did not look back going the five and a half furlongs on the sloppy main track. The daughter of Omaha Beach, now a two-time stakes winner. In fact, she broke her maiden in the debutante last summer at Ellis Park and picks up that second lifetime win once again against Stakes Company. No doubt about it with Hot Beach and her speed on full display here in the FanDuel Limestone.
The unofficial results of Keeneland's seventh race, number 14, Hot Beach, finished first. Number four, Zoe's Prime, second. Number five, Kodiak Wintergreen, third. Number eight, Big Trouble, fourth. 14, four, five, eight, unofficial. In the winner's circle for Keeneland's seventh race, fifth running of the FanDuel Limestone Stakes, number 14, Hot Beach, owned by the Board Short Stables, LLC, of Travis Borsma, trained by Brian Lynch, Jose Ortiz, the jockey. Hot Beach, a three-year-old filly by Omaha Beach out of hot water by Medallia Doro. The winner bred in Kentucky by Cobalt Investments, LLC, a Keeneland November weanling, Hot Beach, Five and a half furlongs over the main track listed sloppy today in one minute, 5.7 seconds, and the results are now official. 14.458, the official results. In the winner's circle, Mr. Scott Hazelton, representing FanDuel, makes the trophy presentation for the FanDuel Limestone to the connections of Hot Beach. It was over from the start with Hot Beach and the Fanduel Limestone Stakes. Brian Lynch, Jose Ortiz. How quick was she away from the starting gate, Jose? No, she got in there and she put her head down. I knew she was going to break quick. So it was a matter of the nine horse if, if he was going to break quick as well. But he didn't. So I was very happy to go to the lead. And she did it easy from there on out, it looked. Yeah, broke like a shot. And then I just see Chile. When I asked her to go, she responded well. Congratulations. Thank you, Scott. Brian, she looked like a quarter horse leaving there. What'd you do to get her ready like this? I've tried to follow my good buddy Wesley Ward's instructions over the years. Leave there running. Has she gotten better? Well, I hope so. I hope she makes this transition from two to three. She was, had a great little two-year-old campaign, and Jose's worked her a bit during the winter, so I felt very confident with him up on her today, and uh, it was a good result. It's a lovely race to win here in the spring. Congratulations. Thanks, Scotty. Hot Beach, ultra impressive in the FanDuel limestone.
Thank you, Scott. Keeneland's eighth race upcoming. Double and pick three wagering starts the last of the day's rolling pick threes. No scratches, no jockey changes in race eight. The main track is listed sloppy. The turf is listed yielding for that ninth race feature, the grade one makers mark mile, the rail at zero feet on the turf course.
Race number eight, less than 19 minutes to post. The late pick three begins with this eighth race. And the second leg, of course, the featured event, the grade one Makers Mark Mile, which is race number nine. Surprised at the price on the four. Pleasant surprise at that. Eight to one on Magic Express for Brittany Russell. Six to one on the morning line. Comes off of an impressive win last time out at Aqueduct going six and a half furlongs, pulling away from that field. So gets a bit further ground to work with here today, which doesn't look like it'll bother this daughter of good magic. She improved off, or he rather, he improved off of his debut effort where he showed speed and then got caught. And then last time out, as I mentioned, just picked things up even further on the fast track. We'll see how he handles the off track here today. He did run over a good listed surface at Parks on debut in mid-February. That might be part of the pause with the wagering on this horse. But nonetheless, eight to one, we'll take it here in race number eight on Magic Express. The number six horse, is labor for Rusty Arnold. This is a Bernardini gelding who's had one run this year after starting back last year in the fall after getting some summer off, uh, the summer months off. And I think getting back to dirt is going to be a positive move for this runner. This is a horse to me that fits this seven furlongs distance here today. And coming off of this break, I think that he'll be ready to go. Laver for G. Watts Humphrey Jr. out of that brilliant first damn center co court, the daughter of Smart Strike, Martin Garcia in the saddle. 40 to 1. We've seen the G. Watts Humphrey Jr. Silk Spring big upsets in the past year at Keeneland. I wouldn't be shocked if Laver is able to put forth a very good effort here today in race number eight. And then the number nine horse, that is Polster for Ben Colbrook, one for one in his career. This is the son of Spitestown. Spitestown, sons and daughters, very good on the off track. That's the idea here with this Colt. He's going to have to step up. He ran a good race last time out and did so in a quick time, really, uh, when you consider the three-quarter mark and then obviously the finishing time of 116 and three. I think that he's got to move forward in him, and maybe he can move forward on this off track here today with Jose Ortiz in the saddle, who we have said and will continue to say has had such a very, very good meet here at Keeneland Racecourse in the spring. But the favorite is the 11 horse Tunisian Spring. Look to give Wesley Ward another win and potentially another favorite winner here at Keeneland and as, as it has been a day of favorites thus far. We'll talk more about them once they head trackside. Race number eight coming up in less than 16 minutes here at Keeneland.
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's eighth race, the Runny Mead, an allowance for four-year-olds and up seven furlongs over the main track listed sloppy. Double and pick three wagering starts the last of the day's rolling pick threes. No changes in race eight. Post time at seven minutes. Here's a horse to consider, Battle of Lexington, not just because of the name, but because of the form that this horse has on the off track. He absolutely freaked on a sloppy track back on the 4th of July at Belmont Park. He was geared down in the final eighth of a mile because he had built up such an advantage in that race. He is a New York bred. The connections behind this horse, led by Greg Biesinger, they have hopes of building off this race and looking at New York bred stakes company on down the line. 27 to 1, things could have not come up more ideal for him as far as the track is concerned. Watch out for Battle of Lexington based on the sloppy track, which we know he likes, and he gets here in four minutes' time as he warms up on it. The number five horse, Suncroft, Sitting right now at 6-1, to one. it's surprising to see a Judmont Brad Cox runner at this kind of a price. He's a colt by Arrogate with Axel Concepcion in the saddle. Axel rode him in both of his starts so far in his career. He was a debut winner at Turfway Park. Last time out, he was beaten as the odds-on favorite. He's been favored in both of his starts, but he is not going to be the favorite here today at 6-1. to one. He's a pretty son of Arrogate, and the sons and daughters of Arrogate, that offspring, they have done very well in a short amount of time on the off track. 18% winners for that sire line. So Suncroft at odds of 6-1. to one. But as we mentioned on the paddock side, Tunisian Spring is the favorite. There he is looking for another win for trainer Wesley Ward. We'll see if he's as quick as he has been in his dirt races. And I'm sure that's part of the reason why, a big part of the reason why, combined with his form, that he is the favorite given how well speed has done today on this sloppy main track. Race number eight begins the late pick three at Keeneland in less than three minutes.
Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's eighth race, the Runnymede. Moving at the line, race eight. Magic Express goes in. Perfect edge coming forward. Polster moves into line. Suncroft goes into the gate. Now B. Sud. Tunisian Spring, the last to load, now coming forward. Goes in, they're at the post. And they're off. Perfect edge is there. Tunisian Spring up on the far outside. Here's Tunisian Spring. Extreme outside up to take a narrow lead. B. Sud goes with him, though, in these opening strides. Polster third. Perfect edge fourth. Suncroft fifth. Magic Express sixth. Down toward the inside. Polster going to take back from that battle up front. Further back, Labor between horses is in the seventh position. Bramito up the inside eighth. No, no, Joe is in ninth. Battle of Lexington is tenth. And Classic Legacy eleventh alongside that one at the back. The opening quarter in 22.2. Nine seconds. Suncroft, the leader to the far turn. Tunisian Spring caught toward the far outside. Is wide to the turn. Three wide. Moving up, though, in second. Just off the leader's flank. B. Sud is in third. Magic Express is in fourth position. Perfect Edge is dropping back through the pack. Bramito moves by. Takes over fifth. A good eight lengths from the lead, though. Followed by Battle of Lexington. Sixth toward the inside. Here's Tunisian Spring to draw alongside of Suncroft. This pair contesting the lead. Quarter mile out. Magic Express is five lengths away in third. Suncroft to the inside, Tunisian Spring to the outside, Magic Express, then Classic Legacy, who's fourth on the grandstand side, Battle of Lexington, then Bramito, Suncroft the leader, Classic Legacy runs on from the outside towards second, still four lengths away, it is Suncroft in front by three, Battle of Lexington runs to third, but it will be Suncroft, Axel Concepcion to win it. Classic Legacy second, Battle of Lexington third, Magic Express was fourth. Suncroft looking good out here as the battle was on between himself and the favorite, the 11 horse Tunisian Spring. He couldn't hang, and the five goes on with it. In his first dirt attempt for Judmont Farms, the son of Arrogate puts together a sterling effort in 122 and four. The three was rambling late, Ca classic legacy under Junior Alvarado, and the two Battle of Lexington, who was so far back early on, picks up a check and finishes third at 48 to one. But it's the five on top, Suncroft for Brad Cox. Box at seven to one.
The unofficial results of Keeneland's eighth race, number five, Suncroft finished first. Number three, Classic Legacy second. Number two, Battle of Lexington third. Number four, Magic Express fourth. Five, three, two, four, unofficial. In the winner's circle for Keeneland's eighth race, the running mead, number five, Suncroft. Owned by Judd Mott of Fahad Bin Khalid, trained by Brad Cox, the jockey Axel Concepcion. Two wins today for that trainer-jockey combination. Suncroft, a four-year-old son of Arrogate, out of Princess Karen by Stay Thirsty, bred in Kentucky by Judd Mott Farms, Incorporated. Seven furlongs over the main track listed sloppy, one minute 22.95 seconds, and the results are official. Five, three, two, four, the official results. In the winner's circle, the Runny Mead Trophy presentation to the connections of Suncroft. Keeneland's ninth and featured race upcoming, the 36th running of the Maker's Mark Mile Grade 1. The turf is listed yielding. The rail at zero feet on the turf course. Scratch the one equitize and scratch the seven du jour. This will start the last of the day's rolling doubles. The Grade 1 feature coming up.
Grade one Maker's Mark Mile is up next here at Keeneland Racecourse. Yielding conditions on the turf course and the number five horse Kubrick is being bet. He's eight to one right now from that 20 to one line. This is the son of Dabawi, who's a half brother to Raging Bull, the 2021 Maker's Mark Mile winner. So the bloodlines are there to keep this family rolling in this grade one event at Keeneland Racecourse. For, tra for trainer Chad Brown and owner Peter Brandt, he is a beautiful son of Dabawi. His half-brother, Raging Bull, was a son of Dark Angel, and he was a beautiful specimen as well. But this horse is so dappled out. He looks well turned out, as you can see down here in the paddock. And this is a colt that began his career over in France. In fact, he was a two-time winner in France. He was a group three winner on soft ground. He ran on heavy ground. These conditions should not be an issue for him. And his win at Tampa Bay Downs was ultra-impressive. I know it was against lesser versus what he's facing today of the grade one category and one of the best milers in the world in master of the seas but the way that he leveled off and accelerated late in that race he is an impressive colt and we'll see if chad brown can win another grade one here at keeneland eight to one right now on kubrick this four-year-old son of dabawi Master of the Seas, a six-year-old son of Dabawi, winner of the Breeders' Cup Mile in his most recent start in November. That was five months back. This is his comeback race. Trainer Charlie Appleby telling me that he is an easy horse to get fit. He wintered down in Dubai. He says that the ground here today for both of his runners, including Naval Power, should not be an issue as they have seen conditions like this. So Master of the Seas, 7-5 to five on the board right now. Expected to see him a bit of a lower price, and there's obviously still time for that to happen. But 7-5 to five on one of the best milers in the world who has shown up each and every time that he has run against grade one company in the States. He won the Woodbine Mile in impressive fashion just got beat by up to the mark two starts back in October here at Keeneland he's the one to beat there is no question about it coming in with the question, uh, credentials that he maintains up to this point and the three horse naval power he was gelded prior to his last race he ran as a gelding in the grade two Singspiel stakes in Dubai at uh, Dubai at Maidan he won that race by two lengths he ran in the group one ran in the group one Darley Dewhurst stakes back in 2022 as a two-year-old he was six behind Chaldean and Royal Scotsman so they obviously had high hopes for him at that point in time they gave him some time he came he's come back in good fashion and he's run over soft ground in Dubai at Maidan and this is a horse that Charlie Appleby has said that if it comes to be a stamina test naval power will appreciate that with the yielding ground that he's facing today which may lead to that stamina test in the makers mark mile frankie dettori comes into town to be aboard the number eight integration that's going to be the top selection for me for trainer suge mcgahee this horse ran so much better than what it might suggest on paper last time out he was coming in off of a long layoff and he had to go against grade one company and the pegasus world cup turf invitational he was down inside on the rail he had a good pocket trip until it went a little wrong and he never had any clear room coming down the lane i actually thought there's a strong case to be made that he might have even finished second, maybe even won the race if he had a better trip. Obviously, he ran against I'm Very Busy in that race, who came back to win the Muniz down at the fairgrounds by three lengths and a very impressive performance. So that was a tough beat, a tough race for him, and I think he comes back in a big way today. He's 5-2 to two on the board right now. Gabby, we are getting close to the start of this grade one event less than 15 minutes to post horses waiting to be saddled for the grade one makers mark mile next here at keeneland
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's ninth and featured race, 36th running of the Makers Mark Mile, Grade 1. Four-year-olds and up in this stakes on the turf, which is listed yielding the rail set at zero feet. Scratch the one, Equitize, also scratch number seven, Du Jour. Post time at six minutes. Parading to the post for the grade one, Makers Mark Mile, number two, Emmanuel, owned by the Windstar Farm LLC of Kenny Trout, Sienna Farm LLC of Todd Manganero, trained by Todd Pletcher, the jockey, Irad Ortiz, Jr. Number three, Naval Power, races for Godolphin LLC of Mohammed Al Maktoum and others, trained by Charlie Appleby, the jockey, Tyler Gaffleone. Number four, Master of the Seas, owned by Godolphin, trained by Charlie Appleby, the jockey William Buick. Five, Kubrick, owned by Peter Brandt, trained by Chad Brown, the jockey Flavian Pratt. Cheryl Spite, number six, owned by Charles Fipke, trained by Roger Atfield, the jockey Luis Saez. And number eight, Integration, owned by West Point Thoroughbreds LLC of Terry Finley, owned by Woodford Racing LLC of William S. Ferris Jr., the trainer Shug McGahee, the jockey Frankie DeTore. Post time for the grade one, Makers Mark Mile, in just five minutes. The Godolphin runners are feeling fresh here today at Keeneland Racecourse. There's a look at Naval Power, 9-2 to two on the board right now, getting plenty of attention. He's continued this energy from the paddock out to the post parade, and he is a good-looking animal. Son of Teofilo for Charlie Appleby. Would not be surprised if he's able to be on equal terms of his stablemate, Master of the Seas, who had even more energy in the paddock, who's now even money on the board, the number four runner coming off of his win in the Breeders' Cup. We'll get a look at Master of the Seas and the Godolphin Blue and the Blue Cap that William Buick, the number one rider for Godolphin, wears here this afternoon. But naval power with Tyler Gaffleone in the saddle. He certainly does look good down there. And there is a look at Master of the Seas without a pony. He did not come out with a pony, and he is just feeling as good as a horse possibly can. We'll see if William can get him to settle in his races. Typically what we see from him coming from off the pace in his races over the course of his career. But he is feeling as fresh as a horse possibly could for this grade one test and then the number six horse Cheryl Spite nine to one on the board right now winner of the makers mark mile back in 2022 looking to become the third two-time winner of this grade one event the last to do it in back-to-back -back years was wise Dan in 2013 and 2014 Kip DeVille completed the double in 2007 2008 Cheryl Spite did not get the opportunity last year to defend his title after making a trip to Dubai in 2023, but he is here looking to repeat. He is a quality horse. He's a millionaire, $1.4 million earner for Mr. Fipke and Roger Atfield. Don't sleep on Cheryl Spite as he gets another grade one test today here at Keeneland. The featured event, the main event is up next. The grade one makers Mark Mile.
The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's ninth and featured race, 36th running of the Maker's Mark Mile, Grade 1. Moving into line, race nine. Emmanuel goes into the gate. Naval Power comes forward. Here's Master of the Seas going in. Now Kubrick. Cheryl Spite. Integration, the last to load. Goes in, they're at the post. And they're off in the Maker's Mark Mile. There goes Sheryl's Spite. Kubrick between horses. Emmanuel toward the inside. Emmanuel moves up. Now takes a narrow lead, but Kubrick is right there alongside, heading into the first turn. Cheryl Spite will go third. Backs away from that front pair, heading onto the turn. Integration toward the outside. Master of the Seas inside of that one. Naval Power is last about five lengths off the early lead as they head off the first turn and up the back stretch. Emmanuel, the leader. Emmanuel leads it by almost a full length. Kubrick goes second upon the outside. The opening quarter went in 24.3 eight seconds. Cheryl Spite is next and then Master of the Seas, who's fourth down toward the inside, two lengths off the lead. Gap of two more lengths at the midpoint of the backstretch to Integration, who is next to last, travels there fifth by a neck with naval power to his inside. They continue their journey headed over to the far turn. Emmanuel got the first half mile in 49.2 seconds over the yielding turf. Emmanuel leading Kubrick by a length. Master of the Seas, third along the rail. Still two lengths from the front now. Followed by Cheryl Spide and fourth up on the outside. Naval Power still to the inside of horses in fifth. And Integration wide in sixth. Still five from the front. Naval Power tries to find some running room for the back. They've all got to catch Emmanuel. Kubrick is there. Master of the Seas looks for running room. And here comes Integration. It's wide open. Master of the the seas up the inside, naval power bursting through between horses. Integration, Cheryl Spite. It is master of the seas in front. Naval power goes second. Godolphin one, two, and deep stretch. Master of the seas is back, and he's back in style, winning the grade one Maker's Mark Mile under jockey William Buick.
another remarkable display from Master of the Seas here stateside. It really is amazing the turn of foot that this now six-year-old gelding has and how he relaxes off the pace with the amount of energy that he shows before the race, the relationship that he and his riders, and in this instance, once again, William Buick have, is just brilliant. This is brilliance at its highest level. Master of the Seas, once again, a grade one winner here in the States and picks up a grade one today at Keeneland. The unofficial results of Keeneland's ninth race feature, number four, Master of the Seas, finished first. Number three, Naval Power, second. Number eight, Integration, third. Number six, Sheryl Spite, fourth. 4386, unofficial. Race 9 results official. 4386 the official results.
In the winner's circle for Keeneland's ninth and featured race, 36th running of the Makers Mark Mile, Grade 1. Number four, Master of the Seas. The winner owned by Godolphin LLC of Mohammed Al Maktoum and others, trained by Charlie Appleby, William Buick is the winning jockey. Master of the Seas, a six-year-old gelded son of Dubawi out of Firth of Lorne by Dane Hill, bred in Ireland by Godolphin. One mile over the yielding turf, one minute 37.1. Now, the trophy presentation for the Grade 1 Maker's Mark Mile. Rob Samuels, Maker's Mark Managing Director, 8th Generation Distiller. And Kipto Taurus, designer of this year's Maker's Mark Mile Commemorative Artist Trophy. They present to the connections of Master of the Seas. A 1-2 finish for Godolphin in the grade one Maker's Mark Mile, led by Master of the Seas, trainer Charlie Appleby and William Buick joins me. He's such a high-energy horse. We saw that in the paddock. We saw that when he went out onto the course. How does he relax so nicely for you during the race? I think that's, that's been a part of his journey throughout his career. He's learned, you know, in, in, in that his last, you know, two or three years racing to, to relax in, in any spot in the race, really. And I think... You know, his trips to America and Canada have really, have really made a man of him. And, um, you know, once the gates open, you know, he's the kind of horse you can put him anywhere you want. And, you know, he's going to have that finishing kick. So he, he's so good on fast ground. So we weren't quite sure about, about the, you know, it is very soft on the turf. And, um, but, you know, he, he's, he handled it well and he, and he picked up like he, like he would on fast ground. So he's, he's a, you know, he's a very good miler. It was a brilliant display. Congratulations, William. Thank you very much. Good on fast ground, good on yielding ground, just simply good, if not great. And I think we can start throwing that around. Charlie, what stood out to you with this performance here today in these conditions? Well, I'd say he showed his versatility. I was confident. I mean, when, you, when he's done as much winning as he has over here on quick ground, you're always slightly, you know, dubious when the ground is, is you know, as testing as it is out there today. But he has got past form on that, on, on slower surfaces. So, uh, you know, but what I liked about it is that he, they got into a nice rhythm round there. Um, Naval Power, unfortunately, was a bit slow from the gates, and he, we thought he would be a sort of a potential horse that we could go forward and ensure a decent gallop. But there was a nice gallop on. William got him into a lovely posse, and once they came off the turn, all William just needed was that gap to be able to give him the, the signal to you know, pick up, really. 
Williams stating that his trips here to the U.S. and to Canada have really made a man out of him. Is that a fair assessment? And, and if that's the case, what has it been about the, the races here and up in Canada that have done that for him? Yeah, as is well documented, he's, he's challenged us over the years, in his younger years, should we say, of uh, you know his temperament just being you know so highly strong. And the more, the more travelling he's done, he's matured. I was pleased with him in the prelims. I know he got a bit. Uh, excited once William got on, but you know, uh, these horses they shipped from Dubai, they had a long fl uh, flight over here, and we had to uh, have an easy few days. And then, and then unfortunately, the weather conditions stopped us from doing probably the, the, the normal, you know, work that we would have done. Um, so, they, the pair of them were fresh enough, and I was thinking, I just wish I'd got a decent canter into them this morning. But anyway, look, uh, two great rides. William gave his a great ride, and Tyler uh, gave his horse a lovely ride. So, you know, they both hopefully got a nice future for the summer here uh, in America. And he will be here. This is where he will be campaigned, is in the United States moving forward, both of these runners? Yes, hopefully the pair of them will uh, potentially run, uh, well, Master Seas might go uh, to Churchill, uh, Derby Day there, and uh, Naval Power might go head to Aqueduct, uh, and then they're shipped down to, um, they're shipped down up to Saratoga, uh, and, and then spend the summer there. We can't wait. Thank you for sharing them with us once again here in the United States. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Master of the Seas, as brilliant of a run as you will see here at Keeneland. It was a true pleasure to witness that display in the Grade 1 Maker's Mark Mile. Thank you, Scott. Keeneland's 10th and final race upcoming. No carryover for the Toyota Super High 5. Scratch the 7. Lips say bliss. Number 7. Lips say bliss. Scratched. Mile and a 16th. Main track is listed sloppy. This race will finish in the short stretch at the first wire.
12 minutes away from wrapping up a brilliant race day here at Keeneland Race Course. And just before we get to this group, Master of the Seas and that performance in the Grade 1 Maker's Mark Mile, those types of performances on the race course are what define Keeneland. That was a brilliant run from that son of Dabawi. And so pleased to hear that we're going to get a chance to see Master of the Seas and his stablemate Naval Power compete here in the United States. That was simply a treat. Here in the nightcap, starter allowance, starter 30 and a mile and a 16th over the sloppy going. As Tima, the number 10 horse, is who I go with. He's two to one on the board right now. What a difference the surface has made, the surface switch has made for this son of Candy Ride. This is a gelding, and speaking to his trainer, Mike Denny, back on the 4th of February when he was getting to run for him, getting ready to run for him for the first time after being acquired out of a Shadwell dispersal where he was running for 25000 ran nowhere in the end beaten 19 lengths but then mike denny moved him over to tampa bay downs moved him onto the dirt and he has done nothing wrong since he won by 11 he won by four lengths most recently moving up in class he moves up in class yet again two to one on the board right now for this son of candy ride there's that sire line once again here on the off track at keeneland race course that we have to refer to he has been a simply different racehorse since switching surfaces i read ortiz jr in the saddle soon to be in the saddle as he'll ride for the first time i expect more of the same from him which will go a long way here this afternoon against this group and the handicappers are paying close attention to the number 10 horse Let's go on to the number four. That is Midnight Raid for Norm Cassie, five to two. Winner last time out at the fairgrounds, and that was improving upon his prior performance at the fairgrounds where he was second, and that third off the layoff pattern, which is very popular, really did work out with him. He's going to try to keep that momentum going here today as he shows up to Keeneland. You can't ignore the form that he has. He's been competitive in these starter allowance races. He's two to one on the board right now, but certainly with the presence of the Mike Denny horse on the outside, things do get tougher, as you expect, coming from fairgrounds up here to Keeneland Racecourse during the spring meet. And then laughing all the way, the number one horse for Michelle Level. He's got speed down on the inside. He could be dangerous with this post draw, with the speed that he has. He needs to be quick away from there and maintain that position. He's nine to two, making him the third choice right now in the wagering. This is a very good race coming up. Starter 30 at a mile and a 16th, bringing together horses that are in form at this level always adds for a intriguing race in these starter ranks and looking forward to it to round out this Friday card here at Keeneland.
horses are entering the track for Keeneland's 10th and final race. Starter allowance, three-year-olds and up, a mile and a 16th over the main track listed sloppy. Race will finish in the short stretch at the first wire. Scratch the seven, lips say bliss. No carryover for the Toyota Super High Five. Post time coming up in just three minutes. The number eight horse, Washington's Union, currently 14 to one on the board. I think this is a sneaky horse in this race. He hasn't raced in five months. He's had published workouts on the comeback since the beginning of March right here at Keeneland. So training locally over the last month, month and a half, as far as the workouts are concerned. But if you look at his races, he fits amongst this group. He ran well in a starter allowance race back at Churchill at the beginning of November. Prior to that, I think that $80,000 claiming level, now what is a two lifetime where you can get some horses dropping out of Maiden Special Weight Company was just a hair too tough. But he is a runner that has a big look in here. He's run well at Keeneland in the past. So if you're looking for that price horse, it is Washington Junior, in my opinion, as he sits at odds of 13 to one. As we double box in the number four horse, Midnight Raid for Norm Cassie, the second choice at odds of five to two, and deservedly so. There he is with Corey Lannery on full screen winner of his most recent start. But as far as the handicapping and the wagering dollars are concerned and the wind pulls in this race, I do feel like this has been sorted out right between the 10, the 5, and even the 1. But with the 8 being the sneaky play with some, don't want to call it hidden form, it's there, but form that makes sense in and amongst this group. Less than a minute to post before the nightcap.
The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's 10th and final race. Moving into line, race 10. Midnight Raid comes forward, along with Stop the Spread. Washington's Union moves into line. Tagliatelle. Ejtema, the last to load. Goes in, first wire at the post. And they're off. There goes Gilded Kraken from the center of the track and laughing all the way is there to the inside. These two come to the front together and Midnight Raid is away running in third. Stop the spread. His fourth close up but caught wide heading into the first turn. Laughing all the way from the inside starting spot. Hugs the rail, saves the ground, leads it. Three quarters of a length. Stop the spread. Moves up far outside. Just off the leader's flank into second. Gilded Kraken backs away in the third position. Ejtema was wide around the first turn out toward the center of the track but does move up a couple of positions into fourth. Midnight Raid hug the rail and scoots up one spot from fifth. Washington's Union had an awkward move off the first turn and is back in the sixth position as they head up the back stretch, followed by my friend Louie at seventh toward the inside. Long Shadow, eighth on the outside, and Talia Tele is last of the nine. 24.49 seconds was the time for the opening quarter. Laughing all the way, and Ejtema, they go one, two, separated by a half length. Midnight Raid is in third position. And then Long Shadow moves in the center of the track to fourth. Washington's Union between horses in fifth. My friend Louis six back toward the inside. 49.21 seconds to time for the opening half mile. Laughing all the way is the leader. Midway on the far turn. Leads at three quarters of a length. As to us being asked for more. Not responding yet. There goes Midnight Raid moving up. Midnight Raid at the quarter pole goes to second. A length off the lead of laughing all the way. Talia Tele picks up the chase. But it's the top of the short stretch here. And is still seven lengths from the front. They turn for home. Midnight Raid the leader. Midnight Raid sweeping by and opening up on a five-length lead. Coming toward the final furlong, Talia Tele runs toward second, down toward the inside. Laughing all the way is now third, then Gilded Kraken and my friend Louie, but all of that well behind. Midnight Raid, Corey Lannery, much the best here in the nightcap. Then it was laughing all the way. He was up for second position. Talia Tele was third, Gilded Kraken, and then my friend Louie. He has steadily improved through the winter, now into the springtime midnight raid, and he maintains that form for back-to-back -back wins for small batch thoroughbreds and trainer Norm Cassie. Corey Lannery aboard for a second consecutive win with this son of Brody's cause. An impressive win at odds of 2-1 to one as he draws away to win the nightcap here at Keeneland.
the unofficial results of Keeneland's 10th race. Number four, Midnight Raid, finished first. Number one, Laughing All the Way, second. Number nine, Tagliatelle, third. Number five, Gilded Kraken, fourth. Number three, My Friend Louis, fifth. 41953, unofficial. In the winter circle for Keeneland's 10th and final race, number four, Midnight Raid, owned by small batch thoroughbreds of Fletcher Mock, trained by Norm Cassie, Corey Lannery, the jockey. Midnight Raid, a five-year-old gelded son of Brody's cause, out of Night Market by Midnight Loot, bred in Kentucky by small batch thoroughbreds. Mile and a 16th over the main track listed sloppy, 1 minute 45.65 seconds. Race 10, results official, 41953, the official results. Pick six pays on six of six with a consolation five of six. The late pick five on five of five, a consolation four of five. No carryovers for tomorrow's card. Post time, 1 p.m. Eastern. The second floor grandstand, including the sports bar and the mezzanine bar, will remain open for simulcasting for another 30 minutes. You may advance wager any races occurring after that time. For now, on behalf of Keeneland, thank you and good evening.